Morning. We're, um, we're just about ready to go. This meeting is being recorded. Just to continue. 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 Oh, you right, Gordon? Yep. Excellent. Okay. I just, I declare the meeting um, open for this morning. And just, um, we've got a blessing to start with. Kia tauteranga marie, kia whakapapa pounamu te moana, he hui arahi mā tatou e tarangi nei, aroha atu, aroha mai, tatou e tatou katoa, hui e tai ki e. Thank you everybody. So who have we got on, um, that is here at the moment? Oh, thank you. We have got... Everybody here? So there are no apologies. Arama, how are you today? Are you there? Can yeah. you? Hi, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Uh, it doesn't sound like you're good. <laughs> you take care of yourself, but glad you're able to come on. Um, <laughs> All right, so there are no apologies then. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the apologies, please? So moved, Councillor Lee. Okay, thank you, Councillor Lee. Can I have a seconder, please? Sandra Wallace. And Sandra Wallace. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Councillor. Sorry, Councillor Wallace. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. Thank you. Aye. Okay, confirmation of the agenda. There is one late report that we did um, receive, and that was a report of draft feedback on the Minister for the Environment's Resource Management Act reform materials for discussion, uh, and that's no, for November 2021. So we are adding that to the end of the um, agenda, which will be 6.9 in public business. All right, so with the changes um, to the agenda, what I'm also going to do today is do the council meeting public, the corporate and regulatory public, and then non-public at the end, um, it, just for ease of using with, with Zoom. So can I, all those in favor for the confirmation of the agenda, please. Aye. 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 All right, thank you, Aye. that's carried. Are there any leave of absences? Thank uh, you. For the 17th of March, I have got a um, part absence. A what? Sorry, I didn't catch that. You won't be, you won't be there for the 17th of March. Uh, partly I will be. Partly um, I'm going to an auction on the 17th of March in Carol. Oh, right. Okay, no, that's cool. Thank you for that. Um, so with that being, um, that leave of absence, can I have a mover and a seconder to, to support that? Oh, that's better, thank you. Yeah, Sandra Wallace. Thank you, Sandra. I don't know why it's not showing everyone. No, it's not showing everyone. Absolutely. Uh, Billy, Billy, can we show everyone? As well as the agenda? I think you'll have to um, open up your contact list, um, the participant list, to show everybody. Okay, all right. Okay. But it's not showing it yet because it's quite hard to. I don't, oh, that's not going to no, be. Because that takes over the screen. Yeah. I'm just trying to, so we could see more of the councillors. Yeah, we just can't see mm. you. The views available are up the top right of the screen. You'll see view there. Click that and you've got standard side by side which we're focusing on the speaker side by side focusing on the gallery oh, on, on the on the speaker side just don't yeah this on top there top of um the tiles the tiles on your left there the tiles yeah, so i've done the tiles yeah, but just the, the gallery and it's only showing that yeah so if i go to that it's only you've got a page down so i don't know why it's not no Talking, support, everyone, but then you have to page down, and that's too hard because yeah. you only see a few people, and this is the full screen. Yeah. That's weird. 
normally to the whole lot. Can you make the, um, Billy, can you make the agenda smaller on the screen? Um, I'm it's not taking up sure. Pretty well. I don't think you can read it. Not, not really, because it's it's your view at your end. Um, the <clears throat> yeah, there are, are options, but it's been a bit of tattooing for me. Okay, so uh, up the top where you see view options, uh, next to the green bar, there's view options. Click down there and click side by side to turn that off. Next, view options. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I went to the view button again and I got um I got different options. So A, you can stop the video in the shared screen. That would make the agenda smaller. Yeah, you can't read it though. That's not much point. Um uh, you can resize it. You can grab uh, you can grab the corner and resize it to something appropriate. So where do you want me to go for that? Uh, just grab the corner of the, if the agenda is the small screen at the moment, you just grab the corner of the agenda window or the agenda screen and, and drag that out to make it a more appropriate size. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Better. Better. Still doesn't fit everyone in, but just about everyone. Yeah. There's okay. quite a few people in. I don't know if you'll get everyone. Um, the and then the view options have changed now because you turned off that um, that side by side thing. So if you go back to the view, um, oh, how it just takes that? it just takes it out again. Mm. So side by side, we've got that, or we've got a bigger agenda. What is your can point? We just, can we um, increase the top? Put the arrow at the top, and then that's not going to eliminate. It won't let me do no, it. It only does it up on the corner yeah. like that. Yeah, it's a shame. For some reason it doesn't want me to do it. No. Okay, what do we want? That's probably all right. <laughs> Can everyone see the agenda or is it too small? Nothing Sorry. has changed for me. Yeah, you're just adjusting oh. your screen at the minute. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right, okay, all right, yeah. okay. I think that'll do then. Yeah, okay, all right. That's fine. We're okay. Unless um, you want to um, just have your uh, I mean, your, your, um, the agenda on your, on your screen, yep. can we just keep this as, as the... Uh... Yeah. What we're going to do, just going to use the agenda on my screen. There okay. we go. So you can see all, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Because it hasn't changed on this side. Okay, we're good. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's good. Thanks, everyone. Sorry right. about the hassle. We're just... No, no, all, all good. good. People in this. All good. Rightio, let's get moving through the agenda. Confirmation of um, the minutes. And we've got confirmation of the minutes of Thursday, um, the 3rd of February, and we're on page three of the agenda. Those minutes um, start on page six, page seven, page eight, nine, and 10. Now I'm just looking for any matters of fact in this um, in this these minutes. Has anybody got any comments? No. No, there being none then. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the minutes, please? Councillor Shorter. Uh, Councillor Shorter and Councillor Nailis. Thank you. All those in favour? Against oh, yeah. carried. Are there any matters arising from these minutes? No. No, there's right. Thank you. There being none, we're going to move straight into my report. It start, um, starts on page 15. I'm moving my report. Um, have I a seconder for that report, please? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Councillor Nailis, thank you. Um, are there any matters of are matters arising in this report? No. Thank you. We're now looking on page 17, the street tree policy. And Mr. Parker, he's on screen. I can see you there. Um, Phil, thank you. If you would like to take us through, it's the street tree policy. 
We had the policy there. No. Miss Phil, you're um you're on mute. mute. All right, that's better. Uh, that's better. Can I see right. you, please? Sure, hang on. I'm trying to get that. Here we go. Ah, that's good. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Cheers. And the change of view options. Yes, so uh, you take the report uh, as read. Uh, there is a summary there of uh, the minor changes made to that policy. Thank you. Thank you. And, and really, um, me, re me reading it, it was just updating it, um, just um, bringing it into the, um, into the current space that we're working in at the moment. Um, I will email you, Phil, just a couple of little things that I just um, typo stuff. If that's it, I have had a um, email from Alan Blair. He's obviously read the public part of the agenda and his comment was that the draft policy has no reference to planting species that attract native bird life. And I, do, and I just want your feedback, Phil, on this. He said the halo effects of Mangatotari means native bird life is spilling into the surrounding areas which all councils ought to be cognizant of and plant trees that attract them. This is Mr. Blair's opinion. There are exotics that do so and the policy ought to be written to factor this in. Um, the draft reads, there is little likelihood of native trees being planted as they are mainly not deciduous. If the pol policy had been in place decades ago, the magnificent totras in Balmoral Drive would not have been planted. Um, yes, so that's what he's um, seeking a question on about no reference to planting species that attract native foods. Comments? Yes, so, yes, so the, the issue was there's very few native trees that will be not going to grow large enough to cause infrastructural problems later on as indeed we have with the Totoras on Balmoral Drive. Uh, we have to, with street trees, be very careful in terms obviously of access and visibility. And so, yeah, the natural shape of some of the smaller natives, uh, such as Manuka or Kofis, um, that, that they're not really conducive for visibility, they're more bush-like, and therefore you'd have to prune them up and then they would look pretty awful because that's not their natural habitat. So the issue for natives is that most of them grow very large and then you have problems further down the track. So that's why primarily we, we, we would use native plantings in our reserves where we minimize those sort of issues. Street, tre street trees, you've got to allow for the maximum size, visibility and maintaining access on the footpaths and lessening the effects on um, curbing and, and carriageways. Excellent, thank you. That gives me information to go back and talk to him about that. Thank you for that, Ms. Parker. Are there any other comments from any other elected members on no. the tree policy? Uh, Councillor Nailis. Yep, I agree with Phil. I've read through the whole document, um, being interested in trees and, um, and we can have the natives in the reserves and in the urban areas. Um, we have we are restricted to what we plant, so I agree with the whole document. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you to that, Councillor Nailis. If there's no other questions or comments, thank you for that work, um, Mr. Parker. Um, appreciate that. And I oh, in it it also talked about um, wood in the policy about wood merchant um, about the if we cut a tree down, the trees are cut up and left on the side of the road for people to. Uh, pick up and use for firewood. We, we, is that just, um, we do that when it suits us? We didn't do that for the Oaks and Bridge Street, did we? Don't we now give it to the Lions Club or haven't we been giving it to a wood merchant? Uh, for that, for the oak, oak trees and Bridge Street. Yeah. Yes, that went to wood merchant. That was around because there were nine trees that we were talking about in a short space of time. Um, but normally um, we, we 
yeah, we're talking one or two at a, at a time yeah. in, in a street. And uh, that, that's long been the process that we we just leave that on the curb. It's first and first served. I like that. It, as a public asset, basically. So, yeah. Excellent. Okay, no, that's cool. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Do we have a mover? We've had a mover and a second. Do we have all those in favour? Again, oh, Councillor okay. ja uh, Jackson, you've got your hand up. No? Yes. Yes? No, no, sorry. Okay, thank you. All right, all those in favour on the for the street tree policy up, um, update? Please say aye. 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 Yes, Carrie, thank you. Uh, Phil, you're still here, Mr Parker. 6.3 smoke-free playgrounds and sports area policy. Um, it's it, it's only a very short policy, but it's actually coming quite... Um, what's happening there? Oh, I see. Thank you. It's quite um, important nowadays. Mr Parker. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Again, uh, take it as being read. It is... Uh, yeah, again, just minor changes to, to update it, um, and uh, yeah, open open to uh, comments on it. Okay, just for, so who we got? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, before you, Councillor Nailis, in background on the second line down, the council provides open spaces and facilities, etc. It says South Waikato District Council has one. Then it's got a six crossed out for playgrounds. Have we got what? What? I'm just asking which one it is. Can we just make that? Yes, um, yes I, I noted that. that yeah. Sorry, I noted that typo. I've actually amended it uh, in the ECM document. It should be 14. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. 14 playgrounds. Yeah. Right, Councillor Nailis. Thanks, Mr. Parker. Um, thank you very much, Phil. I read. Most of the document uh, or the policy, smoking and vaping, are they the same? Of course Ms. not. Uh, uh, Councillor Dane is saying no. Come on. Uh, so, sorry, um, I, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a lag here. You wanted to know about vaping and smoking. Are they the same things? Is that your question? Yeah, because I feel okay. that, that um, if it is only for smoking and if people are in those areas and are vaping, I think it's just as bad. Right. Mr Parker, comments? Well, bearing in mind this is a review of uh, the current policy, uh, that would need to be a decision by council whether they wanted to add vaping uh, as something that we want to educationally advised uh, is, is not good for your health. I'm not sure we have uh, evidence to back that up. Obviously there is for smoking, vaping, I, you know, is, is that correct? I think that's, that's, I'm not sure where other councils have landed on that. Uh, I think we can actually prefer, Ms. Terrace, have you got something? Uh, Madam Chair, so this is obviously new for all councils because they'll all be reviewing their smoke-free policy, which didn't contemplate vaping. I think probably we need to have a look at what other councils are doing so we're not out of sync with them. Mm -hmm. So, Phil, I think what you could, what we could do is we could approve this and we can do an amendment at a later date if we find that the vaping issue is included or not, because I'm not sure whether it is. I don't. I think there's a bit of a lag. Um, and if we were the ones to go with vape, no one else had done that, we might find we've got issues with it. Right. So my recommendation would be treat it for smoke free at the moment. We'll look at the vaping side of it. Thank you for that. Um, and I think that's a, a good way to go forward. I see that Councillor Napur has doesn't think vaping is um, covered under the Act. Thank you for that information, Councillor Napo. And it sounded like uh, Mr McFadden's been there, done that a couple of years ago. Is that correct, Mr McFadden? Uh, yes, we did start a review of all this in line with the Smoke Free 2025 policy a couple of years ago. So there is some work and background around this. There is? Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, any other comments then? I think probably the, the, the advice we've been given from Ms. Terrace is that 
we okay it and then we can make an amendment. Are there any other questions, comments on that? Any? No? All right, there being none then, thank you. The recommendations are there on page 29. We receive the report and we adopt the updated version. Councillor Lee, we'll move. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Have <coughs> I got a second, please? Thank I'm you, so Councillor Shorter. All those in favour? Against carriage. Thank you. Oh, just get to the chat. Oh, yeah. Tough. Business resilience policy, Mr. McFadden. That's on page 35. Um, I'm taking it as read. Mr. McFadden, if you'd like to um, talk, please. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Your Worship, um, elected members. Um, Yes, I'd like to take this report as read. This is the business resilience policies now come to council for adoption following presentation to the recent uh, audit and risk committee. Um, reason for it being brought to council is they're under the responsibilities of the audit and risk committee. There is certain activities they do in regards to business resilience and BCP. Um, and so, and that's been written into the policy. So hence why it's been brought to council since select members do play a role in, in this. Thank you for that. Any questions, comments that was discussed at the um, farm meeting? Um, it, it's a big business resilience and that's, as you say, your business continuity plan. Uh, any comments on that, please? Has anybody got any questions to ask Mr McFadden? No? All right, there being none, can I have a mover and a second before the uh, report? Thank you. Councillor Nalis is moving it. Councillor Shorter will second it. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Carried. Thank you. What I'm going to do is I'll get somebody to um, move it. I'm just going to choose somebody to second it if that's all right. And if you don't want to, you can say so. Otherwise, I'll um, I'll just put somebody's <laughs> name there. All right? Cool. Ms McFadden, from here, um, and there's actually been quite a lot of work gone into this, and thank you for that. I think it's really important. Um, it, it's a significant part of our risk um, appetite and, our, and our, our acceptance of risk um, as a council that has been worked on here. So thank you. Um, next one then, we have got to go, hang on, I've just got to find it. Six point five three twenty one twenty two project delivery internal audit project selection. Mr. McFadden again, please. Yeah, good morning. I'd like to again take this report as read. Um, this is following the discussion that was held at the recent Finance Audit and Risk Committee in relation to the internal audit program that had been put together. Um, with the decision made to focus in this for this financial year. Um, is focus on this financial year just on one audit with being the project delivery and management process and as part of that we the discussion then came to doing what what would be called a deep dive on um, two individual projects so hence this report's come to council to allow elected like, members from the list to select which two projects they'd like to be part of that audit. Thank you. So there wasn't, a, and actually I just recognised it here. So we've got the project management and delivery, and we have actually um, budgeted to do internal audits. We were going to do two a year, as I understood it. 50K, I think we um, budgeted, didn't we, Mr McFadden? So of that, the, decision, the decision of the FAR committee was that we, we wanted to, as you said, have a deep dive. So to look at choose a couple of projects that we would um, pick apart, I guess, um, to look at processes and look at the risks and how they were um, handled and developed and um, right from start to finish and, and on time, on budget, all of that. Have you got any, so this is the time, um, where you're looking for, Mr. McFadden, the two two projects. 
Correct. So this is because the discussion was that like the members would like input into which two projects were looked at. So in the back of the report and the under attachment two is a list of current um, key projects that are happening at the moment. Unfortunately, we've only got one attachment. We didn't have attachment two, which had which was supposedly having the list. Have you got a list of the projects? Have you got a list there that you could actually? Um, uh, yes, sorry, I'll, I'll read through my copy of the report. Please, yeah, I haven't got it. You might have. Madam, Madam Chair, um, Andrew, are you referring to project management and delivery and then the diagnostics? Yeah. Are they yes. the two projects you're referring to on page 47? No, the two projects detailed diagnostics are to, oh, to be okay. So you've so got, you've got the audit okay. scope and then so the next in, top. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so and then the oh, okay, so you haven't so the third page hasn't come across. Okay, no, that's oh, fine. So I'll, I'll I'll read I'll read the list that um, oh. I have here in front of me. So basically, yeah. the key projects listed at the moment is the Tokoro Digester project. Yep. We've we've got the roading program. Yep. We've got the Tokoro Pools project. Yep. The Tokoro Library and Community Hub project. Yep. The business park at Maraitai Road project. Yep. The DIA Three Waters Funds Tokoroa Denitrification Project. Yep. Pateru Wastewater Gravity Main Upgrade Project. Yep. Wastewater Treatment Plant Wetlands. Yep. Uh, the T-Rail Domain. Yep. Uh, District-wide water reticulation renewals. Yep. Uh, cemetery extension in Dumfries Road. Yep. Pataru stormwater. Yep. Tokoroa landfill aftercare. All right. Uh, Pataru uh, skate park. Yep. Uh, Pataru. Pateru Water Park Design and Refurbishment. Yep. Uh, the wheelie bin rollout. Okay. T telemetry and SCADA for waters and wastewater is my understanding. Right. Yep. Uh, Arapuni Water Supply, new bore location. Yep. The T Rail eyesight. Right. The T Rail Wi Fi and security. Yep. Pataru Public Wi-Fi. Yep. And Stanley Park Social Housing. And Stanley. We haven't started with that. Lee Social Housing. Okay. So, councillors, that's the list that's been put forward and it was um, that was decided upon. Have you got any comments or any particular projects that you would like to um, identify as having a more detailed diagnostic on them as part of our internal audit process? Yes, I have one. Councillor Glucina. I think the Pateru Water Park might be a good one. It's very public and questions about the overall process are inevitable eventually. So if we have answers ready, it'll be a good one to address. All right, thank you. So is there a general consensus that Pataru Water oh. Park would be a good one to um, to look at? Um, Councillor Nailis? I prefer the Tokoroa Swimming Pools. Uh, it's, a big, it's a big project um, and I would like to delve a bit deeper into that project. Okay, so we've got two on the table at the moment. We're only looking for two. So if anybody else has got any comments or would prefer anything else, that's fine. Put that forward. Or for yeah, can I um, make another suggestion? I'd be really interested because we've chosen to um, go in a different direction regarding the Tukuru pools. But it'd be really interesting to do one on the community hub in the library of Tukuru. I think that one, um, there could be some really good learnings coming out of that one as well. Just another question um, regarding the selection that we've got available. Have we already done one on Leith Place or like, is Leith Place an option? Why wasn't it added as one of the list? 
items. Mr. McPherson. So this was a list that was provided to me by the projects program by the programs team of what their current key projects are. The Leith Place project, um, as my understanding, has been now finished for for a period of time and is not sitting on that current list. Thank you. Ms. Harris. Yes, so Madam Chair, my recommendation would be you would review projects that have been completed that are not still in train. Um, so the library hub would not really suit that. That would be the next tranche, Councillor Dane, if you wanted to select that next time around. But um, th this is this is actually looking backwards. It's not planning for the future. So it's a diagnostic of actually what happened and what the process was. So all three of those projects, the Tauru Water Park, Tukuro Pools and Community Library, they're all actually current at the moment. So we, so we need to look, um, look back. And if you look at most of these, they, they actually are, um, all current. are still current. Yes. Mm. So, so Madam, to explain, yes. to explain what happens in these internal audit diagnostics is they review what happened versus what was meant to happen. This is documentation versus discussion. So um, it's really, you know, you want to find out are people following process, are they doing those sorts of things? It doesn't evaluate the decision making, you know, what the decision was. Yeah, okay. So it's really just to check on it. are we are we doing things properly? Are we doing them in a correct manner? It won't give you the quality of the decision or the other alternatives. So often for internal audit projects, it's something that's a quite a big process that has a lot of money or a lot of public interest involved. In that case, Leaf Place really fix that bill, ideally. Correct. So Leaf Place does fit that bill, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's only, yeah. all so right. Through you, yes. um, Your Worship. Um, one of the so one, a couple of others on here that are probably more towards the end stage in life, which might be useful, um, would be some of the stuff around the the denitrification projects or the digester project because they're, they're towards the end of life and towards the end of the project cycle too. So while they haven't fully completed, it, there, there would be enough in some of those projects to actually sit down and also have a good review of. Okay, and I looked down the list too. The wheelie bins is another one that could be yeah. looked at because that's been completed. So are there any other comments about that? We Councillor Nanus? I support Councillor Dane with Leaf Place. Leaf Place. Right, yeah. Councillor Salter, sorry, your hand yeah. up. Yeah, um, I would would uh, I'm I'm with Councillor Dane on this, but let's look, let's have a look at Leaf Place. Okay, I think that is a very public one that has actually created quite a lot of polarisation in the community. And, so, and I think from woe to go, it has so that, it does, but that doesn't mean to say just because the public um, are polarised in it, that the, that the process hasn't been correct. So mm. I think that's, that's right. a, yeah. a, a good correct. one as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, what number one is Leith Place? And number two, um, Mr. McFadden. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wallace. Um, maybe we do look at the willy bins. Because um, mm. my thoughts are the same too, because most of those other projects are either haven't started or, or only just started. So the wheelie bins is another one that's possible, because we're looking for two, aren't we? So perhaps the willy bins. And these are both very public um, yes. projects as well that have had feedback from the public. Yes. yes. So it's, yeah. and we understand them as opposed to mm. some of the other, I'm not, perhaps not so with mm. it with some of the, um, the stormwater and stuff like that. Whereas we know we've been very on the journey with the other ones. So it probably makes it more easier for us to follow. That's just my thoughts. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Ms. Uh, Mr. Naidu. Uh, Your Worship, I think, you know, having the, uh, the voting network Audits in there, it's just pointless because it's getting down to uh, maintenance yeah. here anyway. Yeah. So right. they do an audit, so maybe that needs to be a little more going uh, okay. but, but the other thing I just want to mention is, is that it's always good to have a project that went really well to see why it's gone well and what we can learn. Yes. What process is. It's always good to have mm. a Absolutely, absolutely. And there was a lot of good things that happened in both the Leaf Place and the Weavens project. So I think, yeah, I agree with that. All right, so are you comfortable with then we've settled on Leaf Place and the wheelie bins? Is everybody happy with that? 
Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So, and that being the case, we've got the recommendations then. Um, if there's no more um, comment on the project selection, the recommendations uh, just, that we receive. Sorry, who's that? Yeah, sorry, through the chair. Oh, Councillor um, Lee. Yeah, I have had my hand up for a bit, but my I suppose it's hard to see if you can't see everybody. Um, just, just a reminder about the leaf place one that um, there is still work um, going on with the uh, leaf leaf based project, particularly to do with um, some of the decorative stuff and um, also is uh, the work they're looking at um, looking at the uh, wastewater piping which um, comes out of the uh, toilets, uh, you know, from the leaf place toilet. So um, I, I consider that uh, would be a good one to uh, find out why. Um, now we're looking at uh, seeing if the sizes, you know, the wastewater pipe sizing is correct, if we've got to replace it. So I agree with the uh, wastewater, um, I'm sorry, the leaf place uh, project and the wheelie bins are a good one because that's, that's done and dusted and it's uh, already up and running. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for that. My apologies for not seeing. Okay, we've got the recommendations here, three of them that council received the report that the project delivery detailed diagnostic audit. Um, is based on the project selection, which um, is leaf place and the wheelie bins, and that KPMG is engaged to con conduct the um, internal audit. So that's three recommendations. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Wallace is moving yes, it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, and Councillor Jansen is seconding it. All those in favour? Against, right. Barry, thank you. Right, and moving on again to fees and charges, the green waste fees and charges. Now, I think we've got uh, Mr. Madsen is online. I saw him there before. Um, I'm going to... Jenny, I'm... Oh, Ted, sorry, you are too. Thank you, Ted. Uh, Mr... Anderson, please. Season charges, page 48. Here we go. Yeah, just trying to get the so technology to work now. Oh, that's all right. Okay, so just very, so, very I can talk quickly about yes. this. Um, there was some, a group of um, contractors came in and were concerned about the cost of green waste to their businesses. They are lawn mowing contractors, most of them small owner operator. And um, with the fees and charges for green waste that we had um, put in the, in the fees and charges for this year, they were struggling with the cost of them. So we're wanting to ask council if there any changes could be made. And they're really looking at it for this year. So we had a good discussion um, and mm. I gave them the promise that we would bring it back to council and see if there could be any changes. I didn't guarantee anything, but could be any changes um, made immediately. Um, be, um, uh, but we would certainly be looking at it for the 22-23 financial year, which we already have done. Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Worship, that, um, that's exactly um, the situation. So thank you for that. Um, as a reminder to elected members is that we've always Traditionally, we've always charged for green waste as 50% of the refuse charge. Um, at the start of this financial year, we introduced the flat rate um, on the, yeah, basically trying to make the operation slightly easier because we just um, built the transfer station. And the idea was by charging a flat rate, we would prevent the need of every green waste vehicle being needing to be weighed twice. Um, the weighing of the vehicles twice is occurring anyway and um, is working um, working well. What has happened is with a flat rate, it tends to um, benefit the people taking in large loads and um, accounts against the people taking in small loads because everybody with the trailer is charged the same. So I think what has happened is um, the um, these contractors were able to get a lot more weight into the transfer station for the fixed rate and would pay a bit more when they were charged by weight. 
Um, on the other hand, we've had also um, people who've spoken to staff and I think to her worship as well about the fact that um, they paying a lot more per trailer than they would have if they'd been paying if they were paying based on weight alone. So as a result, in the draft fees and charges, we've gone back to the process that was in place up until the 1st of July this year to say the fairest and most equitable way is for people to pay for their actual cost, um, sorry, based on the actual weight going into the transfer station. So, so that is what the fees and charges are for, uh, sorry, that we've put in the draft fees and charges. Um, the other thing that became apparent at our meeting um, with um, Her Worship um, was that some of these contractors had previously had an arrangement where they were able to take the green waste without the need of taking it to our transfer station. And so therefore, the cost that was being imposed was making quite a big impact on their business. And I think the feeling I got was if some of them had had the ability to know ahead of time, they would have been able to plan for it a little bit better. Um, and so essentially we said, we'll take all of that information on board. And as a result, we've prepared a report and essentially giving council, I think three options um, in terms of how to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. The three options are on page 49. We keep the fees and charges as they've been confirmed until the end of this financial year, and then we change them back. And that's what we went out and we consulted on and that's what we've got in our fees and charges at the moment. We can, um, one of the other options is change the fees and charges to charge everyone based on weight. That was as it used to be and as we are proposing in the future. Um, and then the other one is change the fees and charges to charge everyone the flat rate. So um, at this stage, there was quite a lot of discussion at that meeting. Uh, no decisions were made. My question, please, Ms. Terrace, is, are we able to change the fees and charges midway through? And would we, would we have to go out for consultation um, to do that? Because we have to go out for consultation in the first place. How would the process be if we decided to change them? So, Your Worship, it's not a rate, but it's a, it's a fee. Yeah. So it's a user pays fee. It's very unusual for a council to change anything in fees and charges during the actual year. So I've not really been aware of that happening. But in saying that because it doesn't affect the rate, it just means it affects your budgeting because yes. you, you're making a change to that. But um, we would have to check to see whether we could do that part way through the year without consulting because mm. by the time you consulted, you'll be one month away from your new financial year anyway. Mm. That's so right. There's no mm. point. Yes, yes. So that's why I would say my recommendation is if you're going to change it, you do it in the new year and you tell people what you're going to do. Thank you for that. The other thing that um, we did talk about with these, there were probably eight or nine um, of these smaller the contractors, is that they were wanting to, uh, relief from the cost of putting the green waste over the into the transfer station. Somebody's going to have to pay, and if it's not going to be them, it's going to be ratepayers because there is there is a cost to it, and um, and that was something that we did point out very clearly that somebody has to pay, and we are heading down the track of user pays, and so they are getting the benefits of that, so they pay for it. Um, are there any comments, please, from anybody else? Councillor, yes. um, Dane, you, would you like to start off because you were at that meeting? And this is, this is really particularly about that meeting. Yeah, um, thank you, Your Worship. I, I think it's just... Uh, yeah, they felt like that they were hard done by by all of a sudden they fell in the category of a um of a contractor fee oh, sure, when, yeah. when um the grass that they're cutting is domestic grass and that domestic grass if it was dropped off by um a non-contractor they'd be paying by the trailer if they were because they're dropping it off they're paying um a weight fee 
So they felt that they were hard done by and um, that's one perspective. And like at the last meeting when Thomas spoke and we looked at it from a different perspective of um, the smaller loads pretty much having to cover um, a large fee for a very small load uh, covering um, the people bringing in a big load. So yeah, under the um, spirit of, I guess, fairness, um, I do support the weight um, of the trailer loads, but like um, our chief executive has also mentioned that it would be sensible to enforce that um, or consult on that and see what our feedback is. And then if that is a decision that is um, desired, we, we, that we bring it into play during the new financial year. Yeah. So I would just be in support of um, status quo for the rest of the financial year. Thank you for that, Councillor Dave. Um, and I, I, um, my comment back to you is, and I, under, I totally accept that how they felt that they were just um, cutting domestic mm. grass, but they were actually being paid for it as well. So right. perhaps their business model needs to change and they need to change their, um, their pricing to cover their costs. Councillor Lee, you had a, um, a comment. Hmm? Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, no, um, I agree with uh, Ted's sentiments that, um, yeah, we should go back to the system that uh, we uh, did have where you pay over the weighbridge for weight with grass. I think it's uh, three quarters of the cost of uh, what uh, general rubbish is, and green waste is half of that. And I also agree with uh, Ms. Terris with uh, what she was saying about uh, leaving it till the start of the financial year. But what we need to do is uh, pass on to those businesses that we are changing the system and we're gonna go back to wait. So if then they need to adjust their business model to the people who uh, lawns they mow, then they'll have that, that length of time that they can change their, their fees and charges to actually uh, compensate them for when they uh, dump the grass um, at our um, transfer station. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Do you need a recommendation for that so that they get notified? So, you might want to add a recommendation yes. to notify those affected parties of the proposed change. Yeah, All right. Yeah, I'll do recommendation three. Just add it on. Uh, yeah. but, okay, so are there any other comments that any other councillor wants to um, make on this subject? Yeah, I, I had my hand up, Sandra. Sandra, um, Wallace, yes. Yeah, so I, I go along with what everybody else is saying as well because I've had people contact me about the paying, they mow their lawns and they've gone to the dump and it's, they've been charged $15 just for a small trailer load. So I think actually what Jenny said, user pay. So if you've got a small load of, of lawn clippings, um, it should be weighed and that's what you pay for. Where if you take a big trailer load, so user pay is fair and yeah, go out for consultation and keep the fees at the as they are at the moment with viewing the new fees from the start of the new year. So that's that's my thoughts. So I'm mm. sort of agreeing with everybody else. Thank you, Councillor Wallace. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Um, page 48 is the uh, are the three recommendations that we receive the report and that. Um, it will be recommendation two that the current fees and charges for green waste remain unchanged for the remainder of the 21-22 financial year. And number three, that we notify the affected parties of that decision. Happy with that? So that's three recommendations. Can I thank you, Councillor Nailis, is moving them. Councillor Petley is seconding it. All those in favour against... All those in favour? Yeah. Aye. Thank you, against, carried. Thank you. Billy, did you get that extra other? Yep. Thank you, Councillor Napo. <laughs> cool, all right. The next one then, um, and thank you, Mr. Anderson too for that. Um, that meeting, although it was a little, it was a, con they were very concerned. I think it was a good meeting. Everybody got um, what they were concerned about off their chest. And I think they got a good hearing. Um, from staff as well. So thank you for that. Page 56.7, Waikato Regional Transport Business Improvement Review. Now, Cherie is, Pasco is the author of that report. Which, oh, hello, Cherie. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm taking the report as read. There was the attachment as well. Would all right, it's just managing. Yeah. All right, okay. There is the um, the review with is attachment six point seven that goes with um, this report. So, Ms. Pascoe, if you'd like to um, just take us through this report. Thank um, you. Your Worship, there's a, there's a bit of feedback noise. So, if you're not yeah. if you're not yes. talking, can you mute, yes. please? Because we can hear people typing. Yeah. Oh, yes. Just mute if you're not speaking. Thanks. Thank you. Kia ora, kia ora, and good morning. Um, Waikato Regional Council commissioned an independent review of how public transport is delivered in the Waikato to ensure that they are able to meet their vision. And this resulted in the Public Transport Business Improvement Review. The review made recommendations on funding and institutional changes that would affect territorial authorities. Regional Council is now gauging the appetite among territorial authorities for a regional rate and institutional reform. Currently, Regional Council rates Hamilton City residents for public transport services, while in the rest of the region, territorial authorities rate for public transport and pass this through to Regional Council, who designs and contracts the services. So Regional Council is responsible for public transport services, and local councils are responsible for the infrastructure. The review suggests that this model is overly complex. In our district, public transport patronage is low compared with the larger centres, and although it is an essential service for our community, it may be seen as low priority compared with the larger centres that experience higher demand, and the concern is that the district could lose the service. A regional rate for the development and operation of public transport and or infrastructure in the larger centres such as Hamilton would mean South Waikato residents paying for a service they may never use. Also, our council does not have a program of works for public transport infrastructure. We have been able to fund infrastructure when required through savings made in other roading areas. To guide our feedback, regional council have provided a series of questions for us to consider. Our recommended feedback is that council agrees in principle that a need exists to change how public transport is funded and delivered, and that doing so would greatly benefit the larger centres. However, there is a concern that a regional rate would disadvantage a small community with a small but essential service such as ours. On the question of supporting the regional council rating for public transport region-wide, our recommended response is that council does not believe that rating for public transport region-wide would benefit our district given the size of the current service. However, a ward rating tailored with each local authority may be a possible solution. Question four asks about possible regional rating for services and or infrastructure. If regional council does decide to go with regional rating, then council would support rating for public transport services only rather than infrastructure because of the low usage in our district. In summary, council does not support the initiative because currently the service offered to our community meets the needs of our community. So our recommendation for your consideration is that council does not support a regional rate for the South Waikato. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Pasco. Um, Ms. Uh, Councillor uh, Machen is our representative on the um, Transport, uh, Transport Committee. Yes, and so, all, I was also yeah. involved from the start of our local um, transport arrangements, and we got our vans, or we used it to set up the service. Um, I'm very happy with this report. I think it's right in line with um, what we should be doing. Thank Mrs. Pascoe for it. Yes, a ward rating system could work, uh, but we don't we don't need to contribute to that. We have looked after ourselves in this regard and we've done it damn well if I may say so. Um, I'm very happy with that recommendation that we provide the feedback as uh, provided to the regional council, uh, but we wish to really stay out of most of what they want to do in that regard. We're in a good place. And I recommend that as long as, it, as long as it can happen, because it will be a regional rate. But I think given the disparate nature of all the communities in the Waikato um, and our different levels of public transport, 
Um, I think if we do have the have it, it needs to be specific, specific to each area rather than just a, a blanket approach because we will get lost in the um, in the system very, very quickly. So what um, Ms. Pascoe, just a question, please. You said we're supporting the need for just looking um, what was your first sorry, I did read it. You agree that the, it needs to change. We um, yes, so actually Gordon might have more of a response to this. So, so there is an agreement that it can be overly complex um, and it can lead to delays. Um, and we have experienced this on some level, um, but a regional rating and um, yeah, we don't believe that that would, that would serve our community at all. And because we're able to respond immediately to needs on a and local level. of services region-wide. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Nino, have you got any comments? Yeah, 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 to you, Your Worship. Uh, I think the intention is, is the looking at improving the business. Um, so all we're doing now is just, just looking at, at councils for feedback. Do you want to get into this conversation or not? Or what is your, you know, what do you think about that? I think eventually they will get to a, a uh, regional rating. Yes. And it'll be absolutely that we make sure that the rating in our district actually serves the need of our community. Yes. Because what's happening now, uh, the fact is that Hamilton is struggling with the uh, mm. with the public transport. So they've got a, a huge public transport system in place, but they don't have the, uh, the usage. So what they're doing now is to offset that they're looking at other regions to pay for that service. And funny enough that I'll be having the opposite conversation when I get up to Hamilton. You will be, right? That's right. Yeah. But, but, but at the end of the day, um, the difference between Hamilton City and, and us is that a lot of people that use the service actually get to work, get to, you know, whatever they do. In, in South Bay Kettle, people are using the, the, the system that don't have any transport. So they are forced to. So what you intend, intentionally will be doing is getting the rest of the rate players pay for a service that's only used by a small group that actually need it. And the rest of them will never use that service because they've got vehicles to travel anyway. Yeah. So it's very unfair to do that. Thank you for yeah. that. All right, are there any other comments, please? Anybody got their hand up? Uh, Mr. Anderson. Just turn your microphone. Thank, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just um, an observation that hidden in the back section of the report done by the Regional Council was a comment about the potential for taking over all of the region's roading services. Um, yes, I did read that. <laughs> yes, so um, none of the questions were directed that way, but it's fair to say that all of the general managers in the region were taken back, that that was included in the report, um, and that it was almost hidden away with no... <laughs> yeah, you, your attention wasn't drawn to that other than it was hidden away in the bottom of the report. Thank you for that. So, what is it? Um, stealth, they call it, isn't it? Like amalgamation was happening. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Nailis, you had your hand up? Yeah, I, um, there's a sentiment nationwide that we have to reduce the number of cars on the roads and that uh, public transport should be uh, lifted. Um, but I believe that our the current uh, model that we've got in the in the South Africa is sufficient with our urban connector. And if you want to move uh, travel to um, Cambridge or Hamilton or further field, then we still have got our city buses to connect us to the other big cities. Um, and therefore, I believe that Miss um, uh, Pascoe has done the right job uh, how she answered all those questions, and um, and I would uh, support this document. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nailis. Yes, 9.1. Waikato um, Regional Council funds all public transport services and infrastructures via a regional rate. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I did actually um, see that. So are there any other comments or questions on the report? Yeah, I've got, I've got a comment, Your Worship. Councillor uh, Lee, yes. Yeah, I'd just like this. Um... I think um, Ms. Pascoe for the uh, report, I thought it was uh, yeah, very good. And uh, the outcome is uh, the correct one for um, our district anyway. 
uh, we don't want to be funding um, public transport for the Hamiltonians. And the problem is with uh, regional um, organisations, um, they lose sight of the picture a little bit. And just recently I saw an um, article about um, Great Barrier Island um, got a bus stop. And it was, I think it cost about $63,000 to put it in, but they don't have public transport. So, you know, just goes to show you that they're, they're not even uh, part of the, um, you know, the, the, the problem is uh, just, they just sort of forget about the little people and um, they um, just spend the money willy nilly when there's no real need. So, and I agree with uh, Mr. Naidu, uh, it, it is, um, we should um, just spend it as we need it um, within our community and not pay a regional. Um, tax for a uh, regional um, transport association. So thank you. Thank you for this. So what I'm hearing at this moment and where we are in this um, space and time is that it's, pro it's not um, not appropriate. We think it's not appropriate for us. Mm. Um, I'm hearing that. Um, I don't know if you all read the uh, the whole report, Becker report, but actually it was quite a readable report and there was some yes. good information. Yes. I was for, for some reports that I've read, this was one of the better ones. Um, uh, Ms. Pasco, do you want to round it up? You're happy with the conversation? Um, we've got feedback here. We've got the recommendations, the three recommendations. I think Councillor Machen um, summed it up really well that, um, that we continue with our own, um, our own funding. So that's receiving the report that we provide the feedback that has been drafted by our staff and we do not support the regional rate for the South by Thank, Thank you, you very much. Will move. Right. Thank you for that. Councillor Lee is moving it. Councillor Malis is seconding it. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you, people. And thank you, Ms. Pasco, for the work you did. You're welcome. Thank you. Right, now we have um, 6.8, page 55, management of the talking poles. Goodness me. Have we got Ms Diamond is here already? Thank you. If you would like to um, present your report. And we also have the attachment, which is the five-year strategic plan, which was created in 2016. This project goes a long, long way back. I remember um, when we first started it and I was manager of teams at the time and we got the first 10 poles up in, um, of the morning. It was heady days those days. Ms Diamond, would you like to talk to us about your report, please? Oh, it might be Phil. Uh, and Phil, Mr Parker's here as well? Yes, there's a joint author. Thank you. Phil's connecting. Yeah, just joining now. Cool. Okay. Oh, would you like to talk to that report? It looks like Kerry's either not there or yeah. on mute. That's nice. Kerry's not there. No, she's not responding. Oh, yeah, you. sorry, I, I was. I oh, she had is. had done it on the button, but the screen one hadn't come off, so unmuted <laughs> on our button, but not on the screen. Technology, got to love it. Thank you very much, and thank you for that um, that introduction, um, me, Jenny. And um, so this, as you said, has been going back for some time, so we've had to, the more you sort of dig in, the more you uncover um, when we've been looking at the management of the talking poles. Um, so you would have seen from a previous report that I um, acknowledged in the report, this report, um, that we said that we were going to do a talking pole strategy and that was going to be pulled into more of the um, vibrant culture um, strategy that the um, council decided on as part of um, the long-term plan or a focus for the long-term plan. Um, and then the management was going to be sitting more under um, 
Mr Parker um, as the activity manager who looks after the um, talking polls. As we were starting to work through it though, there was some of the information that was omitted from the the draft um, management of talking poll strategy that started back in 2015. So um, what we're actually looking for is just a, a bit of some guidance from council and what their intentions are so that we know that we are developing the policies that need to be developed um, and changing current policies. So there's really, um, as in the discussion of this report, three aspects of um, that we need some guidance on. Um, and the first one um, on page 56 within um, on the report is um, around the um, policy and the management of the polls. Um, so in the, currently council already has a, a two uh, property disposal po um, policies that these polls could potentially sit under. Um, so a, a completely different policy wouldn't have to be created or shouldn't need to be created. Um, but I, we just wanted to check that that was the intention of council for these polls to be sitting under, in particular, the equipment and asset policies, because the property disposal policy is more around our buildings, our, our, our facilities, our buildings and our land um, or bare land compared to equipment which is more like um, the desks because um, that policy came into effect when we were renewing um, our equipment within council. Um, so there's the equipment and asset policy as well. So that's what I've outlined in there and so under the equipment and asset policy um, it states that any any asset um, that needs disposal, disposing can be disposed um, under the guidance or under the management of that activity manager. Um, so that means that any disposal, the disposal, disposal of the talking poles would be um, the responsibility of, in this case, um, Mr. Parker, as he's the Parks and Reserve Manager. This, the talking poles are assets that um, are under the finance um, asset register um, within council. They do not sit at this moment under the asset finder register, but they do sit under our financial asset register and are considered an asset of the council. So um, that's the first part um, aspect that we are actually looking for guidance for. And just wondering, um, if you would like me to stop there and for that discussion to proceed, or if you would like me to go through all three aspects. I, I would like report. to stop there um, at this okay. stage and just talk about this, because my question here, just on this particular one, these yeah. are public artworks. Don't we have, and, and we've got other public artworks like um, our, um, our paintings yeah. that we've acquired over the years from the Art Society and the competitions we've had. We've got um, other, what, so so our, it's, and it's community art. Mm. Community is invested in these polls, i.e. invested um, interest and in time, not necessarily money or anything, but, but, but they, they, they've got an ownership of them. Is, is there nothing separate from that, from our equipment and assets that we could put those under and rather than just um, one single person having right now, I'm, you know, I, that's going to be disposed of, that we have a, um, a little bit more of a, a road, I'm not saying a robust, but a little bit more of an input into that decision of disposal. And that that's exactly why, sorry, that's exactly why we we've put, brought this to council's um, yes. attention. Um, and you would see at the end of the first paragraph in the discussion yeah. paragraph, I've noted um, that the exclusion, that the equipment and asset policy to identify the exclusion of the talking poles and possibly other pieces of significant right. artwork. Because at the moment, the only other policy that I'm able to find along with um, Mr. McFadden and our policy register is the arts and culture policy, which is actually reads more like a strategy than an actual policy. So that's why there's this gap that's created um, that exists at the moment. So instead of just charging off and going, well, that sits under the EAP, 
yeah. is that really the intention of the EAP when that actually came into effect when we were looking at getting rid of um, old desk and all of that. These yeah. these artworks uh, do sit in a different area. And so if a new policy needs to be developed, then that policy would likely consider all of those artworks and um, yeah, and the policy, things of like what you said, things of community interest that are of um, both financial, cultural um, value. Yeah, all right, thank you. Ms. Harris. Um, Your Worship, it's quite common for councils to have what's called a public art policy, which is not so much the strategy, but it does have some strategy, but it actually records all of that public art and also includes art that's created not by council, but it's vested in council, because that's important to think about as well. Yes. Because often we get vested things and then council has to make a decision over time. So most councils will have some form of public art policy, which is kept separate from your fixed assets, because often they have a cultural component or um, they're different and they're usually yeah. valued differently as well. So yeah. that's quite common. Thank you for that. That's good information. Your Worship, for you, Your Worship, a good example is the theme we have that's been tweeted to us in the city. Then, that uh, you know, big summer theme that we actually drove through, we took it on. That's part of, that's yeah. part of the Talking Poles um, oh, project. That yeah. was Talking yes. Pole yeah. and, and the symposium, yes. yes. Thank you for that. Yes. Are there any other questions or comments about this particular um, part of the discussion? I'd just like to say yeah. a couple. One is it was interesting to note that the, um, the two sculptors outside the existing supermarkets, which I believe are actually owned by those organisations, uh, we're oiling and looking after them. And uh, so that needs to be looked at as well. They are distinctive, they're very good, but, you know, who's, whose job is it and who's paying? I don't know. Um, and I, but I do think yeah, we need this because some of these artworks uh, art weeks that will de definitely degenerate over the years and that disposal thing is very, very important that we get that right, uh, culturally in, in particular. So, yes, I agree with need a, a policy on it. A separate one from the equipment and assets, yes. yes, and the property disposal policy. Thank you. Any other comments, please, from elected members? Uh, I, I agree with that. Oh. Hold on, we'll do it. So I'll start with Councillor Glucina, then tap Councillor Lee, and then yeah. Councillor Doctor, did you want to say something as well? Right. Councillor Glucina. I, I agree that the art, the polls and the art that we've got is, needs to be under a separate policy altogether because we don't want to be... Um, yeah, on the disposal, it's got to be done... If it's a poll, it's got to be done in a sensitive way. Other artworks, I don't think we've got anything to dispose of. I understand that the the paintings around the building are actually belong by the owned by the art society, so we look after them as custodians. Uh, but the overall, the policy is prepared. I'm happy with that. Thank you for that, Councillor Lee. Yes, yeah, through the chair. Um, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I uh, tend to agree that uh, we need a a separate policy for the um, for the arts stuff, particularly for the talking poles, because as uh, Councillor Aitchen said, they uh, will deteriorate at different times and they will need, um, you know, to be disposed of. Just uh, one thing I wanted to bring up, um, well, actually two things, but in the, under the discussion of three point, uh, number three and A, just with the uh, positioning of the poles, um, when we did the uh, leaf place, upgrade, we decided to put in a um, the, the talking pole forest. So they're all um, grouped together. So then um, any uh, visitors uh, to our town could actually uh, wander around and have a look at the poles instead of having to walk everywhere to uh, go and find them. So um, I think um, that policy should, uh, or that should stay with council, which should be uh, up to council to, to decide where the uh, poles uh, actually sit and st or stand. Um, one other thing, um, and this uh, question is uh, directed at uh, Ms. Diamond, and it's to do with uh, the creative Waikato plan um, for the talk, talking polls about council's um, vibrant culture. I'm just uh, wondering how um, that plan is going along or how it's coming together, please. Thank you. 
Yeah. Um, so just in response to that, we've um, they have not been easy to work with or forthcoming. Um, and so we have got a meeting with them. They've had some changes within Creative Waikato um, as in staff changes um, and did not notify us. And so we are having a meeting with them over the next couple of weeks to lay out the program and what our expectations are from them again um, and to do an engagement plan with them. Because like we said from the outset we, with them that we expect them to be following a, quite a similar process to what we did with Sport Waikato as an um, it wasn't for them to come and put their strategy over us. It was for them to um, walk alongside with us, with their expertise, to engage with our community on what um, artwork could be used or, or the different mediums that could be used to um, make our district more vibrant, but also to articulate the identities of um, the different communities within our um, district. So yes, it's not been an easy one. Um, that the um, vibrant culture one with the creative Waikato, um, but we have a meeting with them. I think it's in two weeks time that we've got a meeting with them. And partly that's me and my availability. Yep. Uh, thanks, Kerry. Yeah, because um, I also noticed that um, later on in the um, agendas, we, they, they come up again mm. um, with you know some of, their, some of their policies. They seem to be telling us as council what we mm. should be doing, where they, where, mm. you know, a lot of the stuff that we're actually doing um, we do that very well. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to tell us that, uh, well, you should be doing it this way or that way or whatever. And, and I, I sort of disagree with some of their approach to how they seem to think they should engage with council. It should be, they should be helping us, not telling us what to do or telling us whether we're doing it right or wrong. And yep. why are they part of, why should they be assessing our 10-year our, our plan? It's got nothing to do with them. There's, mm. That's nothing to do with, uh, you know, their... Um, creative, um, vibrant culture within our community. So um, I think we need to have a serious word with them and I'm glad that our meeting has been organised. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Lou. Right. Um, Councillor Shilter, did you have something that you wanted to say oh, there? No, no. no Paul, Paul. All right, thank you. So that the discussion has just been on um, number one of those points on page 56, and it sounds like uh, public arts... Policy is the way, a separate one, um, Ms Diamond. Thank you very All much. Right. So um, that's what the head, heads up on that one. Thank you. Um, that's very helpful. The next one in that um, point one and one point B is, and I'm glad you're all talking about the decommissioning or disposal. Um, what... Um, Mr. Parker um, struggles with is that there is already a budget, um, an annual budget for the maintenance of it, um, but it's very difficult to determine um, the when should a poll be decommissioned um, and, or, and how we actually determine that um, line in the sand, I guess, is, is probably the easiest way to say it. Um, and that's whether we find that it's unsafe or when the repairs exceed a, a certain amount. So we're sort of looking for information on that as well. Um, or if councillors have even considered that, we can bring that back for discussion. But if you had any thoughts um, on what an acceptable um, repair cost would be before councillors turned thought no that's too much to be investing we think that should be decommissioned now mm. just any initial thoughts so it can guide us in the right direction so my thinking about that Ms Diamond and I'll just throw it out here is it's the health and safety of the community that is the most important um, and, and as far as a cost I guess I wasn't as um, focused on the cost of it that would be decided by the council at the time and the decision, but um, but it's the health and safety. That's what we why we removed the tree man, um, and that was because of safety. Um, so to me, safety is the most important, and then the council of the day can make the decision on um, on cost. But uh, so I'm throwing that out there. Has has anybody else got anything they'd like to yes, comment? Councillor yeah, Bletcher, I'd just like to state on this set. We do need to consider the cost at times of some of these things because if one is discovered to be completely rotten, um, there's not much you can do with that. Uh, to replace the whole thing, uh, make some mockery of it in the first place, I feel, 
We did replace a lot of the chainsaw man, but he is very significant to our collection. That cost us money, and I believe it was money well spent. But I think we need to look at the total cost. If, if a pole has to be repaired to be safe, we need to assess that as an individual. Thank you for that, Councillor Machen. There is opportunities nowadays um, for actually maintaining the poles um, with, with the 3D printing. And you could 3D print, the, print a pole to, to replace it. Costs are expensive at the moment, but they're always coming down. Um, so I'm not excluding anything in, in fixing the poles, but it certainly is the, the safety of them. Any other comments, please? I'm sure people have something. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a comment. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, from my own experience over the last couple of years, I've noticed that um, it's more of a case by case uh, basis on the polls. Um, there's different amounts of vested interest in every single poll. Um, every poll's got its own story and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, similar to what Bill Machen's, um, Deputy Machen's saying is that, um, yeah, it is case by case. And like what you mentioned, council on the day should uh, decide whether, it, whether it's, uh, should be repaired or not because the money factor changes from pole to pole so it's, it's a real tricky one to say but like also what you mentioned um health and safety is a priority so yeah i just support a case by case for each poll um it's a real tricky uh path to navigate on that one thank you councillor jay mr harris uh, your worship so it's quite common for an under public arts policy to go through and do a stock take because you'll be surprised at what pops up that you thought you didn't know anything about but you're meant to be maintained. So that's one point. <laughs> um, and then I do agree it's case by case, but you do need to have a regular review of all of those assets once you've identified them. And I think then, because you don't want to commit future councils to something that might not be appropriate in the future, so you don't know how these things are going to be perceived over time. Because at the time something's created, it's not necessarily how it's going to be seen in 30 years' time. Mm. So I think if you do your stock take, you agree what's in the public art, and then you do some form of um, maintenance review, so you just assess them at every so often. Mm. And then they come back if there's some issues. Does council want to spend some money on this or not? And that can be a case by case. It does create a bit of work for um, the Parks and Reserves team, but if you want to maintain public art, you've got to keep an eye on it. Good information. Thank you for that. Any other comments from anybody? No? I'd like to comment, Sorry. thanks, uh, Your Worship. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, just um, when the, um, the polls were first um, created, carved, um, however they were done, uh, particularly the wooden ones, they were not designed to last for two, three hundred years. They were just designed to last until um, they de degenerated a little bit. And then I, I assume then we would um, dispose of them. So just just with you were saying about the 3D printing and, and hanging on to them, well, that may be a good, uh, a good idea, but that doesn't mean we have to hang on to the original pole if it's deteriorated already. Thank you. Councillor Lee, the intention of those original polls, particularly because I was so closely involved, was that they would last. And that's why all those polls are tantalised. So it, it, they were certainly um, 25, well, 25, 30 years. That was the plan in those days. And they they tantalised them really, really strongly so that the tantalith went right into the centre of them. Unfortunately, they couldn't do that with the tree man. Um, because that was a, a living tree, but the rest of them um, should should be pretty strong. If you look at the ones in Leith Place, um, yeah, they're still they're still going strong. Yes, Your Worship, and I do agree with um, with that sentiment. But um, the thing is, some of the native wood was a little bit harder to tantalise because of the structure of the or density of the wood anyway. So you may not be able to get that tantalising in there. But um, like I was just saying that. They won't last forever. So, you know, 20, 30 oh, years is fine, but yeah, but, uh, you know, they won't last any longer than that. 
Thank you. Great. They didn't tantalise the native ones because native, but yeah, they only did the pine. Um, and that was the first 10 or 12 polls. All right, thank you. If there's no comments or questions, we'll um, further, we'll move on number two. Um, Ms. Diamond, decommissioning yep. of polls. Yep. So, um, and you've all been sort of weaving in and out of these different numbers, so it's good to sort of get a, um, a head up on what you're um, thinking. The decommissioning um, is the next step that we wanted to consider and get some insight into it, and I can hear what's been said around some of them have been. So there is that um, intention that when they need to be decommissioned, they get decommissioned, and that's something that we will work through with um, Mr Parker on and... Um, what's the best way and hopefully with Creative Waikato on understanding what's the best way both culturally um, respectfully to the artists who have um, developed these polls or created these polls as well as what's in alignment um, with council. So I think we may have you know, had quite a bit of information that's come from there and we need to sort of develop that process um, to accommodate that. So thank you. I think a, a lot of that has been actually done. Um, the big concern, I guess, we can do these policies and processes, but at the moment, nothing is in place and we've got a couple, um, we've got a, as you know, we've got a poll in at the depot um, that's, we just want assurance that we can dispose of that poll. Um, now what, hole, what hole is that at the depot? Is that the green man? Yes. No. Because <laughs> well, our understanding was we thought we already had 3D scanning of it. Um, Have we got 3D scanning of it? We'll have to double check with that with. Walter, who's gone, because that was supposed to be held somewhere. So, I, so yeah, want some direction on that, because there's a, whether or not that can be disposed of now, or if that needs to be brought back to the table when, when we find out if we have 3D scanning, or is it if we have 3D scanning, um, then we are able to dispose of it. If we don't, yes. then that it needs to come back to the table, to council. Yeah. Scanning. It needs to come back to the. Uh, sorry, that's one item. I think is if we can establish that we've got a, a 3D scan of it, then that poll can go. But don't throw it out until we're assured that we have those that scan. That poll was, and if it's just lying there rotting away, then there is no um, there is no saving it. I get that, but we just have to. I think recognise the significance um, of that poll. And the particular blessing that was done on that poll, the, the artist came from Wales to do that poll. Um, there's been a huge, huge amount of input in, into that poll. I just don't want to... No, our, our intention <laughs> is, yeah, and, but our intention is um, I know. to recognise that. Um, there's a bit of practicality, but to make sure I, that we do it in a respectful way as well. Um, yeah. That doesn't no, mind us. Sorry, we've got somebody's got yeah. Somebody Nike. Oh, sorry, just you got interrupted. Yeah, you did. Okay. No, Ms. Diamond, I understand. I, I'm being very emotional about that poll here um, because I was involved with it closely. Um, if we have a 3D scan of it, um, then yeah. that's that's absolutely fine. It needs to go. It, there is no saving it. I think that's been decided. Can Any... I ask a question, Your Worship? Yes, Councillor Day. Um, thank you, Mrs. Diamond. Hey, just in res um, in respect to uh, you say like respectful and environmental friendly manner, mm -hmm. can you um, explain to me how what that process would look like with the tree man? Or is it like a case where he just gets cut up into firewood, or do we? Do we find a burial place and bury it? Yeah, what What do you yeah. mean by um, respectful okay. and environmental friendly? So it's already been indicated to us by Ms. Couch from um, Poakani that um, they would like any of the poles that were crafted out of the Rako that they gifted to actually go back to, to Poakani um, so that they can return it back to the lands in which it came. Um, so, you know, that, that's an, a way of um, 
being respectful to that, but also about contacting the artists um, and, um, and having that discussion with them. Um, the environmental, and we discussed the, I discussed this with Miss Couch after finding out about the, um, some of the trees had been treated um, and, and it's how can we it be disposed of if it has been treated? What is the environmental impact? So they acknowledge which hearing from Councillor Lee I think it was Councillor Lee. Um, if none of the natives have been treated, then that, that's okay for them to put it back into the whenua, into the land. Whereas if they've been treated, what is the effect of that treated timber? And it, does that actually need to go back into the landfill? And how do we do that respectfully? So it is, there still is investigation um, okay. and and discussions to be held on what that process looks like to do it in that manner. And as discussed, each we're expecting each item to be quite different um, because it isn't just rako, it isn't just timber. They are made of different material and we need mm. to find the best way to dispose of them that's best for the environment, takes into consideration the people who it was crafted by and for as well. Does that answer your question, yeah. Councillor Dane? Yes, very, very interesting. Thank you so much. And um, I guess I'm... Um, I guess my position would be that I would be probably in favour that that it comes back to council with a recommendation of the disposal. Just I think because it got sentimental value to to everyone, especially to the councillors. And um, yeah, that would probably be my position on the disposal. I I I totally agree with the um, being returned back to Paul Cunning. Uh, well, yeah, Paul Kenny, totally agree on that. What I would also be interested to know is that would they would they be interested in other polls that weren't gifted by them, whether they wanted those as well. But um, yeah, all right then. Thank you. Great thank answer. You. Ms. David, I just um, want yeah, thank you for that. It was a really good explanation. Just a bit of background on the tree man. It was a living tree when. Um, that was carved. It had actually been broken. Some branches had been broken off on a big branches had been broken off on a in a storm. So um, the carver carved it, and it's it, until it started rotting from the top. That's when council stepped in and um, was putting diesel, I think, down, trying to preserve it um, for for a few years, and then it rotted from. The bottom where it was put into the base mm. and that's where it started rotting from the outside in so we cut we uh, no sorry before that it actually started rotting from some of the knot holes in the bottom so we cut it off at the base um of the so that it was separated took the roots of the tree out and then sat it on a plump mm. but then yeah. it started rotting more so that's our tree. That's a part from, from a tree that was 30 odd years in leaf place. Yes. Um, what would we do with that? I'm going to throw it over to Mr. Parker for that because that's a bit more uh, of his expertise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, what do we do? Just, just as a question, Mr. Parker, I can't see you. He might be off again. He might be off. That's okay. I'll, I'll just ask a question outside. That's oh, no, all. There he is. There he is. Ah, well done, Hum. Mr. Parker, how would we um, um, dispose of my my tree man? <laughs> yeah, good question. <clears throat> um, it's an emotive one. <laughs> it, it is, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what do we do? Yeah, yeah. I don't really know. I mean, at the end of the day, as you say, it's quite you know iconic, and particularly with the background. Yeah. On, on how it was, um, you know, created from the storm damage. Um, I think for lesser timber ones that went from Paakani, you know, if, if, yeah, if they weren't treated, you could bury them, um, perhaps firewood, but the green man, I think it's more significant than just doing that. So... Um, it could be promoted. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to say maybe yeah to to burn them with a you know a decent um, hey. proper cultural uh, ceremony. All right. Okay. No, thank you for that. Appreciate that. 
Yeah. All right. So um, we'll move on then, Ms. Diamond. I think pretty well. Um, oh no, the last one is the positioning of of the the polls, and I think Councillor Lee has already um, suggested that he thinks council should be involved in that. I know that we worked with Creative Waikato, didn't we? Um, on on the initial positioning of the of the forest. Yes, and um, Liafa was our um, advisor at, at when they were doing the forest, um, but understanding that apparently she didn't sort of get to do the full um, advisory. So we're looking at engaging with her again and her expertise and you know her local connection is always um, beneficial for us. So um, carry on that through the Creative Wife Cartel contract that we have with them. Um, a, a big one that we've is of concern, the more immediate concern is in the long-term plan budget, we have to move the frame. Um, and although the, a location was put forward and that was to be done this year, I think it was in year one, um, nothing was actually decided firmly, I believe it was. Um, so move the frame from the entrance um, yeah. and what was suggested was to go on Colston's Hill. Um, our concern is once you get up to Colston's Hill, what, what is the objective that councillors are envisaging? Is it to view the distant hills or because by the time you get up there, it's the view that you get is quite um, small. So that's a concern of our, um, our projects team at the moment is where are we supposed to be putting this to get the best benefit? And is it something that council wants um, staff to have a look at other options other than Colston's Hill to bring to the table? Thank you for that, Ms. Diamond. That um, that frame was also part of one of the symposiums, and, and it is a beautiful frame. So I know that I've had feedback that it's broken. It actually isn't broken. That is the actual um, frame that was, was designed. The original um, vision of the poles were with all of them, and it was multimedia, mixed media, pole, pole, stone, wood, whatever. Um, was that we would place them all around the town centre so that people visiting the town would be able to wander around the town and see all of these different pieces of artwork. They've been spread out a little bit further than just the town centre. And there's some, out at, one out at Kinleith, there's, there's others um, all over the place. I would like to see it um, in, still in the town centre. I don't necessarily think that you've got anything particularly uh, up at Colson's Hill, if you're exactly right, you can either see the mountains way, way in the distance, which you wouldn't catch from a, from a photo, but I would like to see that used with people being able to take photos around it. So it was an interactive type um, uh, piece of artwork. And I'd like to see it somewhere in the uh, in CBD with something behind it that's actually um, worth worth photographing. I don't, yeah, I don't know what yet, but I'd like to see it in the in the CBD. Councillor Salter, and then Councillor Lucy. Okay, now now my what you just said, Your Worship, absolutely right. Um, I think that uh, Colson's Hill is, you know, with the frame. I think the frame would be too small anyway. Um, what about, you know, putting it in, in, in Tokoroa at, at the lake, for example, with the lake behind it? I mean, these yep. are just ideas. An option. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Glucina. Uh, similar idea, really. It's, it's no good on Colson's Hill. It, it'll just become something that gets blown over or vandalised. So it's got to be in place where lots of people walk past it. They can either look through it. If you don't want to look through it, you can put a giant LED screen in it and show the South Waikato from uh, a drone or something yeah. similar. But um, yeah. it's, it's, no, it's no good on Colson's Hill. It just becomes another piece of junk up there. Thank you, Councillor Grusina. Any other comments, please? Yeah, can I make a comment? Yep. It was me that suggested um, Colson Hill, and while I... Uh, while I fully respect um, different options and I, I and I agree with them, what I visioned was that that frame to become more interactive than just a out of place frame. I don't know what it's even. I don't know. I don't understand its positioning, 
but I would like to see it at ground level where people can actually interact with the frame, where they can stand in the frame. I'm uh, very open to to wherever it's placed, as long as it's got a great background, but I would strongly support that it is at ground level so it can be actually interacted with. Yeah. Hmm. That's all. Thank, Thank you for that. Um, any other comments, please, from anybody? <clears throat> no? All right. Ms. Diamond, have you? Yeah, so from that, can I put that, so we'll look at doing a public arts policy um, that will sit under our um, vibrant culture um, strategy. Um, we'll look at the processes that go forward. Um, can I suggest that staff um, come back with four, six positions through yes. for the frame? That's the way to go. Yes, yeah. thank you. To bring back to council, yeah. Um, and yes. I think, and we will also look into if there is a three, uh, if we have got those scans, and we will feed back the outcome to council. Good. Thank you for that. Okay. There being no other um, discussion, can I have somebody to move the receipt of the report, please? So I've got councillor Shorter there, and I've got councillor Wallace. Those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then we have got the last um, item on the agenda is the draft feedback on the um, MO, MOE Resource Management Act, the reform. Um, and you've also got the feedback form. So you've got the report um, from Ms. Rolfe and Patrick McCarty, and I see Ms. Rolfe is there. Paula, thank you for being here. And Mrs. Robinson has just can't have, well, no, not just come on, is on. So Mrs. Robinson, thank you for this. Um, are you going to present that or is what's happening, please? Uh, Mr. Thank McCarty you. and Ms. Rolfe will be presenting, um, but I'm here if there's any other high level um, questions. Um, so thank you for your indulgence. We did share this information via email um, because we were un unable to make um, the required agenda deadlines, but I appreciate it looks like the PAs have made it a um, late item. So thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it with Mr. McCarty and Ms. Rolfe. Thank you. Thank you. So I am taking this as uh, read. Uh, first of all, Councillor Napo, thank you. Um, we, I do recognise your conflict of interest in this. Councillor Napo sits on the national steering group for the RMA reforms, um, and we're very pleased and proud to have her there as well. Um, so, Mr. McCarty and Ms. Rolf, if you would like to um, talk to this report, please. And it's about, yeah, sorry, we actually have had, yes, I've had the conflict, no, Judge, yes, I have, yeah. Right. Mr. Ricardo, yes. Yes, thank you, Your Worship, and thank you for taking the, the report as read. This is the next stage in consultation uh, towards replacing the RMA. And uh, the, the government have put out a materials package which they're seeking comment on, which contained a number of questions, uh, about 11, I think. So the report just basically gives you the back background and uh, the last uh, report that council considered on, the, on this uh, point and a uh, draft appendix, which is uh, a draft staff submission to the uh, reform materials that the MFE have put out and uh, they're seeking it feedback by the 28th of February. So uh, it was released in November last year, which is a, quite an inconvenient and very busy time for the council. So thank you for, for considering this. And uh, Ms. Rolf can take uh, any particular questions on the specific questions that, uh, that uh, we've replied to, that we've given some feedback to. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. Um, all right, so are there any questions or comments on our feedback, any feedback at all on our feedback to the future um, resource management system? And that's the, the RMA being um, split up into the three acts. Councillor Lee. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, just um, uh, thank you for the report, uh, Mr. McCarty. Um, just the, um, I think it was item nine about uh, iwi and Māori engagement, um, about their feedback. Um, I noted on the end that you'd highlighted it um, just to show that um, at this stage we hadn't had any feedback about that. So I was just wondering how we're getting along with that. Thank you. Ms. Robinson. Uh, oh, sorry, Ms. Roll. Thank yeah. you. Kia ora, Mia, uh, Jenny, councillors and staff. Um, just in response to that query, uh, we have been in touch with um, uh, Rakawa particularly, and uh, we have asked those specific questions, and those specific questions have come out from the engagement discussion document put out by MFA. Um, it was thought that it was more appropriate that those questions be answered by them um, and put into your submission. But at this stage, we don't have that feedback. Um, and we've got another, another four days to get that. So um, if you're comfortable uh, relying on what the iwi say in relation to those questions, we will add that to the feedback. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Ralph. So is everybody comfortable with the work that has been done by staff? Um, we have had several presentations on this. Um, and I remember, was it KPMG or Tompkins Wake or something that, um, that gave us a presentation uh, about a year ago, would it have been, when it first came out, Ms. Robinson? Am I on the right track with who it was? Yeah, it was Tompkins Wake. Wake, and we shared that um, PowerPoint via the email, just as a reminder. Yes, you, yes, yeah. you did. Thank you, um, which was good. Uh, and I don't see any any issues with our um, with our submission at all. Ms. Terrace, you? No, um, I, mean, I think deferring to the experts, um, and Ms. Robinson yes. and others have quite a lot of experience in this space. Um, it's very complex. Yes, as thank you can see. Absolutely, thank you. Any other questions or any other comments? All right, well, thank you very much for the work that has been done. And I certainly recognize um, that it came out in November and it's a particularly bad time to come out over the Christmas or leading into the Christmas break. But we did have particularly um, the issue quarry uh, was taking up a lot of people's time. So that's absolutely fine. But good luck with the next four days that you get feedback from Ely because I think that would round off the submission um, really, really well. Are you expecting that, that information back within the next four days? Well, I'm, I'm certainly um, hoping so and that, um, you know, Rakara may have done their own submission as well because yes. um, this engagement was specifically targeted to local government and AUE as well as some particular stakeholders. So I'm hoping they'll be over it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Good. Thank you for that. So if there are no um, other comments or um, questions, then I'm just going to put the recommendations that we receive the report and that the draft feedback, which is our Appendix A, is endorsed and forwarded to the Minister for the Environment. Have I got a mover and a seconder for that, please? Thank you, Councillor Naylor, seconded Councillor Shorter. All those in favour? Right. Against, carried. I'll chat with three quickly. Well done, everybody. Thank you for the, all the work that has been gone into that. It's not an e. I mean, it's it's a huge change to to, to where we go with um, local government as far as uh, what's happening. Um, and it's going to be even bigger change going forward. We need to have our say. And um, thank you, staff, for the work that you've um, <coughs> that you've put into this. Right, moving on then, we're now at members' information requests, and then I'm going to break for 10 minutes for, for a cup of tea, but I'm going to go through members' information. Anybody got any? Councillor Lee, did you? No? All right, I'm just going to um, just do a, a quick update on a couple of things. Um, we've had a letter from the Ministry of Health, I'm not sure whether I have sent it out to you, on, um, on the fluoridation of drinking water. I will flick that out to you, or did I? 
I've put out some in that. Okay, so we've, we've, we've received some information from Ministry of Health on the fluoridation, and that's about, Ms. Terrace, do you want to just pick up that up from me very quickly? Sure. Um, Your Worship, um, Ms. Anderson can talk to it uh, just briefly, but basically they requested of all councils whether they would be interested as councils prior to any new waters entity um, interested in more fluoridation and there was a, a fund available for anyone who wanted to do that. Right. Um, I don't know how big the fund is or anything, but it was basically expressions of interest. Um, and I imagine that lots of councils might want to just put that on hold and defer it to the new waters entity. But there'll be some councils that had that in, that had that planning in place and it might be so okay if we considered it. But really just brought it to your attention because you need to be aware you've been asked the question. I've probably just spoken and said everything that Jeff was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, thank you. <laughs> so, so that's cool. Thank you for that. So that's come through. Um I've also had um for a did, did councillors want to do anything in that space or did you want to defer it? Currently at this, uh, well, it's not a report I was just letting no, them know, no. but um, but are you interested? We currently fluoridate um, Tokoroa, but nowhere else. Is that correct, Ms. Jackson? That's right. And this is about us continuing. <laughs> is half the water in Pitaru fluoridated, Mr. Anderson? No. No, no. So, um, Your Worship, um, uh, Tokoro is fluoridated, no one else. Thank you. Yeah, I thought that. So, what's, what are we looking at, either giving it to another entity or do you have any appetite to make an application to that fund for funding for fluoridation or we just leave it and it just gets handled by the new entity in time? Yeah. Because the entity will make those decisions on anyone. That's right. Mr. Anderson. Yes, Your Worship. Um, I think every council that's done anything on fluoridisation has found it to be a battle where the community is evenly split between those in favour and those opposed. Um, and it quite often becomes quite challenging. And the ministry put up their hand and said, this is a health thing and we'll take over the responsibility. Yeah, did. Yeah. And they did that about three years ago. But since they've landed that, they have not taken it any further. So it's gone very quiet over the last three years. Um, if we were to say that we wanted to add fluoride, fluoride to our water supply, we should do that after we've consulted with our community, in my view. Uh, and as we've not intended to do this, we haven't had these discussions. Furthermore, if we were going to make an application, we would need to do um, scope it, do a design, get costs on that, and that's all stuff we haven't done yet. So um, my proposal to elected members, if you support it, is that we um, just carry on with what we're doing, we don't apply to it, and we leave it to the new entity. That's good. All thing. right. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Just the other thing, I just want to let you know um, the three waters update. I sent you an update on the communities for local democracy. Um, there are now 29 councils that have agreed to join that. The last council was Masterton, and I know that there are two others that are considering it very seriously. Um, and that the work that was supposed to be completed, the presentation, to, to pilot to government um, for decision making was going to be in December. It's now being pushed out to mid July. So the urgency for the reform seems to have abated a little bit there. I've had a meeting with the Achievement Centre Trust yesterday, and they've given me a copy of their five year strategic property plan. And I will have a hard copy in your cubby holes. Um, and it is centred around the countdown building and what they're proposing. So interesting read, in fact, um, because we haven't made the decision on the countdown building at this stage. So just the heads up there. Uh, the other one is I had a meeting with the Timber Museum. They have just been successful in an application to the 
wide trust, it's called, and it's a forest industry trust that has X Fletcher's people on it, and they were successful in receiving for project work an upgrade of the centre and education programs for schools, etc., $100,000 a year for three years. So that's going to make quite a big difference um, there. That is for project work. Um, so funny we'll talk about that to the museum. The other thing is that we had we sent in the Buller floods last year, we sent three staff down, Tom, uh, Andrew McFadgen, Andrew Pascoe, and Stu Aston. They went down to help with civil defense, emergency management down there. We've um, had from regional um oh, Councillor Lee, you can take that over from me if you'd like. Yeah, so uh, we had just had an email um yeah from the um Civil Defence Emergency Management side of the Regional Council that um, they wanted to um, do something for um, all, um, well, for our recipients, plus all um, other um, people who went down and helped during that bill of flood last year. So they did offer to um, pay for um, cafe to, you know, take them out for lunch or, or, or uh, morning tea or something along those lines. So I sent the email on to um, Sharon and um, who worship and, uh, the idea come back that uh, we would um, have the uh, presentation of their certificates at a face-to-face -face council meeting. We'll bring them to the meeting and then we'll have, they can uh, come and uh, share lunch with us. And yeah. uh, so I'm just now waiting on the uh, certificates to arrive, which then I'll um, pass on to Her Worship. And then uh, the next council meeting that we have, a face-to-face -face meeting anyway, we can get them up. Um, um, Mayor Jenny can give the hand out the certificates and um, an appreciation for the work that they did and then they can have uh, lunch with us um, whenever that will be. Thank you. Thank you for that Councillor Lee. That's uh, Mrs Robinson how we, we decided to take it forward. I think that's um, quite appropriate. Thank you. Uh, any other members information? No, there being none. Thank you. I'm going to close the public part of the meeting. Thank you everyone. And I'm going to adjourn for 10 minutes and then we'll come back uh, and do corporate and regulatory committee meeting. All right. Thanks, everyone. You can just turn your screens off at the moment if you want to. Get up and stand up and have a scratch. Put your pants on me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. Oh, that's hot. Oh, oh that was okay. It's it's when you run. Put yourself on mute, Pete. Hey? No Put yourself on mute. No one wants to hear you making coffee. Okay.
See you. Mm. Oh, thank you, Billy. Oh, right, we've got um, Colette as our um, PA today for our Corporate and Regulatory, Regulatory Committee meeting. Um, I'm going to chair this meeting. Uh, Councillor Napol's voice probably wouldn't stand up for it. I hope you're, you're okay there, um, Councillor Napol, at the moment. Good work, well done. <laughs> just take care. So we'll make a start on this. Uh, oh, just before I open the meeting, I've just got the latest figures from the DHB that I get every morning that I'm not allowed to share with you. Um, but I'm going to. Tukaroa has 67 confirmed cases at the moment. It's, it's right. Uh, Patararu has 16 confirmed cases and Tito has four <coughs> confirmed cases. All right, so that's just updating you um, as at this point in time. All right, and I think they will exponentially grow over the next week or two. I declare the meeting uh, open. We do have a presentation at two o'clock from Mr. Edwards. He's our BNZ uh, private banker, and he's going to update us on our investments. So we've got no apologies today. Uh, confirmation of the agenda, it is as it is, but if we're not up to, um, or it may mean um, that I will come back into corporate and regulatory after non-public, or we'll go into non-public after this meeting. So with that change of we will adjourn, we will go in at two, two o'clock for the um, collect, yeah, for the presentation, all right? So whatever's happening at two o'clock, we'll go, we'll adjourn it. Cool. Do I, do I need a movement of seconding? Yes, yes, I do. Thank yeah. you. So Councillor Shorter is moving it and Councillor Nails is seconding it. All those in favour? Thank you. All right. Conflicts of interest in the agenda today? Thank you. Confirmation of the minutes. And these are the minutes of the last corporate and regulatory meeting. It was actually on the 2nd of December last year. So it's been a wee while, so you need to cast your minds back. We're going to be looking at um, that as a fact to start with, just uh, only pages six and pages seven. It wasn't a particularly long meeting. Are there any matters of fact anybody wants to bring up? If not, can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Nadus. Thank you, Councillor Jane. All good, thank you. All those in favour, please say aye. Thank Against you. carried. Any matters arising from these minutes? No? Right, we're going to go straight into um, the executive group report. Um, that Ms. Terrace is going to take us through, please. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm, I'm not sure who talks to this report. Obviously, it's got a number of authors. Um, I, I thought you could take it as read. A lot of it will be rediscussed um, further on in the detailed reports. Um, as you see there, there's a discussion there on our HR levels. Um, is there anything in there on those pages that you wish to ask questions about? If not, okay, economic development. Um, then there's some statistics there on pages 11 through, talking about um, meetings with interested party, um, talking about Tiwaka. So you know that we have an issue with them about um, provision of services. So that's not a discussion item or a report item, but we have received a, a letter from them about how they want to work with us or not work with us. Uh, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Social Development, Labor Market Statistics. Any questions there? Um, and then talking through there, um, Actually, is Mr. Bowden online? Yes, he is. There he is. Um, just whether you wanted to talk specifically, Paul, about um, the marketing and space to grow? Yes, yes. Uh, happy to, um, Ms. Harris, and, and uh, good 
good afternoon also good morning to elected members and uh, mayor morning. jenny um yeah so we've we've refreshed the website you elected members will recall that we um we started our uh process of refreshing the website with the explore section um and i think we showed you a video of the new section uh, of that new section last year uh, we've carried on the same look and feel across the whole of the website uh, so all of the uh, key pages which are uh, invest live and explore all reflect the new um, refreshed imagery uh, and content has been revised accordingly and that's an iterative process that continues uh, throughout the year uh, it's well worth going onto the website and just exploring it again if you haven't had the opportunity to do so recently um, as there's quite a lot of interesting content um, the only other points I'd make in relation to the report um, are concerning. We've put quite a bit of statistics in there about labour market. Um, and the reason for doing that was that we, we don't often get the opportunity to reflect on what impact are we having based on the economic development work that we do within the district. Um, so I thought it was helpful to give a bit more of an insight to elected members on the fact that we're being very successful in terms of creating new employment opportunities. Uh, that's, that feeds through in that bar chart, which shows the growth, which is in green um, over the last few years. Uh, but what we're seeing is that that's not, in, not reflected in the uh, statistics for the people who are unemployed in the district. Um, and if you couple that with the growth in population, what we're seeing when we delve down is that effectively a lot of new jobs are going to people who are moving into the district to take up offers of employment. And a lot of the other growth in employment is being taken up by people who are commuting into the district to take up those jobs. Um, so the wider strategic challenge that we have, which is articulated in sort of points one through five on page 15 of your report, are uh, what do we do strategically to try and move the dial? Because um, we need to see local people taking up those job opportunities that are created by growth so we have to work backwards through to year 11 and work out with the schools, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Social Development, what interventions can we put in place that have a long term sustainable impact on the uh, ability of young people exiting the school system to take up employment, the aspirations and aptitude and work ethic of those young people to take up those opportunities. Uh, because if we don't achieve those long-term strategic interventions, the outputs will potentially still remain the same in that the, the great work and the achievements that we're delivering in terms of economic growth will predominantly fall to people moving here or commuting into the district. So we won't capture the full benefit of that growth. So that's why we went into a bit more detail on this support for the benefit of elected members. And um, as my Jenny's alluded to, uh, I'm very happy to take any questions elected members have on any of the content in that report? Yeah, uh, Paul, um, sorry, through the chair. You, um, Mr. Bowden, yeah, sorry, it's, uh, I was just, um, you're just talking about um, people moving into the uh, district and also commuting in. I was just, um, wondering whether our housing strategy is correct. Um, you know, we're looking at social housing um, with so many people shifting into the district to either work or um, commuting in. Would um, our housing strategy, strategy need to change to cater for those people that have been looking for houses or actually want to move into our district? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, you make a very valid point. I mean, the housing strategy is designed to encourage an increase in supply right the way across the whole housing spectrum. So at the last council meeting, we had the opportunity to discuss uh, an opportunity to drive more social and affordable housing in Pataru. Um, but also other work that we're doing is, in, is, is designed to increase the supply of uh, market housing and executive housing so that we capture the benefits of as many people as possible moving to the district by making sure that we've got the right housing uh, provision and supply to meet their needs and certainly that's something that's come through very clearly from discussions with the larger employers in the district over the last three years is that they find it very hard to attract engineers and highly skilled individuals to come and live in the district they're happy to work in the district because of the lack of appropriate 
and suitable housing options for them. So you're absolutely right. We, we need to make sure that we have those options available, new supply coming on stream over the next five years uh, that enables us to then capture the full benefit of that, uh, of that growth and the employment opportunities that are being created. But a very good question. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Any other Councillor comments? Nailis. Oh, sorry, thanks. <laughs> Councillor Nailis, yes. Um, yeah, I totally agree with Paul um, about his remarks in, of the growth in our uh, district and that most of the job opportunities are going to people coming into the district. Um, I'm disappointed that the local population is not picking up the opportunities. Talking to uh, Paniora, Paniora Daniels at that uh, White Tingy Day commemoration at the Timmy Museum, he is doing a lot of great work to engage with um, high school and college career counselors. Um, he's engaging with employers to, to accommodate these young people that haven't got any work ethics. Um, I think he's doing, he's an, he's an um, asset for us to engage or to be that uh, mediation point between us and um, the employers. Uh, we can only do so much as a council to stimulate that. Um, there, must be an, there must be a group of people that just finds it hard to find employment. I think we're on the right track. I, um, I think uh, Paul is doing a great job in this field. Um, and remarking on what uh, Councillor Lee was just saying is that on our farm uh, that we lease in Overdale Road, um, another six hectares has been taken off that will go into uh, construction or into development of houses this year. So the two hectares they're working on now that will go black, six hectares I've just uh, been told will also go black pretty soon. And that means there's more houses being built in Ontario. Good. Yeah, thank, thank you for your comments, Councillor Nellis. I mean, um, I, I would concur with your uh, compliments to uh, Mr. Daniels. The Work It program has been a, a tremendous success. Um, and I think we're all uh, hopeful uh, that that will be continued uh, once the funding expires at the end of June. Um, I know um, Ms. Diamond is working closely with the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs and the Ministry of Social Development National Office to look at the future funding uh, of that programme. Um, but alongside that, we also need to um, continue our dialogue with the Regional Commissioner of the Ministry of Social Development. Um, Mr. Bryant is very keen to look at uh, wide-ranging uh, long-term proposals that can get to the heart of how we deliver individualised, personalised wraparound support for individuals from age 11 right the way through to 17. Uh, work It helps us with the older age group as they're exiting uh, education. But I think we need to go back even further because as probably elected members on this call will recall, you know, most of our work ethic started with a part-time job and a bit of pocket money and those sorts of role model behaviours, those sort of, that sort of environment is something that we need to create for every young person in our community. Um, and we need to work collectively. It's not just council's responsibility. You're absolutely right, Mr. Nellis. Uh, it's the responsibility of ourselves, MSD, Ministry of Education, faith and community groups to work together uh, to effectively weave a tapestry that that supports a young person on their journey into adulthood and hopefully ensures that they end up with a healthy fulfilled lifestyle uh, that involves employment but thank you for your comments yes thank you mr bowden yep. council mention yes it's no doubt in my mind that um mr daniels is an outstanding person in this type of work he's very very good um, but the worrying thing is, of course, we're worried or we're dependent on outside funding for retaining him. I believe we really need to come to a decision because he may at some stage be seize no security of tenure 
uh, of losing him. And we really need to think uh, long term and uh, maybe have to consider creating a position ourselves and funding that to retain his skills in this area. If I can cast your mind back, um, Councillor Machen, we made the decision um, well, that we would not continue funding that because um, into the future, because um, number one, I think that there is a strong likelihood that it will continue to uh, be funded central government, but also it's another one of those um, very, very valuable programs that get um, given to local government with funding and then the program becomes entrenched in the community and the community is, um, actually embraces it and then central government withdraws the funding. And we then end up ratepayers having to pick it up. And that was just a number of many projects over the years. The very first one I remember was Safer Community Council. And I think there was a little bit of a backlash at that stage when we were discussing that, yeah. uh, which is quite acceptable. Uh, we just need to get Ms Diamond, hopefully, to continue talking with um, the government departments and that we will continue to be successful with that. Thank you for that. Are there any other comments? Uh, Your Worship, could I, could yes. I just... Sorry, just to just to pick up on uh, Councillor Machen's points and your very wise comments, um, just to clarify that alongside co-terminus to the discussions that Ms Diamond is having with central government, we are exploring other opportunities and avenues to secure funding outside of council funding so that we have a number of different options available to us if, if in the unlikely event that government doesn't uh, choose to continue funding the programme. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Bowden. Are there any other questions or comments to Mr. Bowden? No, I'll let you carry on. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'd like to go to page 18. I'll ask Ms. Fabry if you would like to just talk through, Councillor, some highlights and some information mm -hmm. on social media, media and communications. Hang on, on, off. There I am. Um, more, more than I, um, uh, elected members. Um, I actually don't have too much more to add over my report. Um, probably the highlights really key to see that Antenna is now over 2000 users, which is great. Um, and um, yes, yeah, social media is tracking really well. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have much more to add, but I'm happy to take questions. I must admit communications with the community and just but on social media, et cetera, seem to be very quiet at the moment. Um, Long may it last. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really good. I think um, it's we've we've had some quite positive um, posts go out. Like we've, we're making some progress on some projects um, and that sort of thing. And to be honest, there may, there may be a preoccupation at the moment with um, COVID. That's right. Which um, is I'm not. Oh, sorry. The, okay. Um, okay. The website analytics. Um, you put that information in here. Uh, we've had a, an email from an uh, interested rate payer suggesting that our analytics are, or that our statistics are very poor. Um, what would your, your comment be to that? Um, in terms of the website traffic, so these analytics are um, based on the hits for the home pages. And um, in order to answer that question in terms of poor or good or mediocre, I would probably need to do some research on what other councils do I, I have I yeah I, I, I can't really answer that um, oh, no, so, yeah, no, yeah you're right um, what, what the, what, oh. one of the things that I would say Mayor, uh, Mayor Shaddock is that um, the analytics do change from time to time it's not like it's the same pages so like you can see this time round that quite clearly interest in our reserves is quite high because yeah. I think you've got what um, four of our reserves in the top 10, which is unheard of. We, do, we don't get that. So that's um, that would probably show that they are an accurate reflection of um, at least seasonal. Right. No, no, thank you. It actually would be quite an interesting exercise to do and look at comparison um, with other councils as well. Hmm. Uh, your, your Worship, could, oh. I, could I just comment at that point? I think... The, the screen sh is showing the uh, analytics that relate to the Space to Grow website, not the council website. So I think um, that needs to be moved oh, on. All right, yes, and, okay. And the, just the comments that were received from a, a member of the community are, are not effectively comparing apples with apples in that you're comparing a 
what is a hobby uh, social media channel uh, to a dedicated, targeted, specific website that's aimed to attract investment. Uh, so you're not comparing the same uh, objects. So, so that's what I'll say on that. But the, uh, yeah, you've and now thank moved you, on. Mr. Bowden. Good comment. That, that is correct. You're right. Thank um, you. If Mr. I may, add, if I may, sorry, um, Ms. Harris. Um, and my comment there would be hits on a website don't really mean much because most most um, things are topic or issue driven, and actually you find that the largest number of hits tend to be for dysfunctional organisations. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not really a good measure of performance or um, satisfaction or dissatisfaction with the council. So there's a whole lot of other things that you need to do, which Ms. Faber is talking about. Yeah. If you're going to do that, you would have to survey and do that. I think survey and do that another and, way. And actually, is that going to be of any benefit to us or not? No, no, no it's no. not. You're right. Um, I think, um, councillors, that, that, that Mr. Bowden made a very good point that when you compare this sort of stuff, apples with apples, um, you do need to compare, um, yeah, council websites are, um, they're quite functional in terms of the type of information that people go to a council website to obtain is not entertainment value, it's, um, it's functional information um, because they are, you know, building a, a shed or want to do a subdivision or that sort of thing. Good comments back, thank you. It, it, that then enables me to have information, good information to respond. And, Appreciate that. And Your Worship, the most, the most comments you do get from users of your website would be generally, how many clicks do I have to go to before I can get to where I want to go? Um, do I find it easy to go to the most common web, you know, information, which is rates and dogs and yeah. things like that. Um, and everything else is other information about the district, but generally um, users of websites only want to see three or four things. And there's a move across the world at the moment going back to keeping things very, very simple mm. and not clouding websites with anything other than what the consumer is driving. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right, back um, to the report. Yes, so um, Ms. Ra, I thought you might want to just talk a little bit about the finance team and the staffing levels and this migration to the cloud. Just, just a quick summary for the councillors just so they know how things are going. No, oh, she's not there. Yeah. Okay, so I can talk to that. So um, I'm aware that the finance team now is pretty much fully staff, which oh, is really good. good. Yeah. And um, Ms. Farrar's got some really good new team members. So that's really good news to be able to staff your finance function and have some good people on board. So I think things are going quite well. We did have some issues going moving to the cloud. Um, oh, Martin. Martin oh. Said, oh, Fiona said. Yeah, Fiona, do you want to carry on? Um, my, my apologies. Oh, um, hang on a moment. That's all right, Fiona. I just talked about you being fully staffed and financed. Did you want to talk about just a little summary? You've got a very small item in the executive report. I know you've got your financial summary, but anything about any other issues like the cloud or anything like that? <clears throat> Yes, and my apologies for that. I had actually just been cut out and I'd only just popped back in when you've said my name. So um, I wasn't aware of where we were up to. Um, so yes, the team are working well. We are um, very well practiced at working from home. Um, we've got a couple of new team members and their training has started, has go, been going really well. And um, for us with um, having um, the annual plan um, pretty much finalised. It's enabling us to have an opportunity to um, look at some improvements in the team in terms of our reporting and also um, transitioning and the cloud has helped with that as well, but we're starting to really um, draw down on some of our processes and, and tightening up our month um, in timetable, et cetera. So, um, yeah, so we're feeling quite positive about um, the next few months and being able to achieve quite a lot. Thank you, Fiona. Um, and I don't really have anything more in that executive report unless there's any other questions of councillors. Right, thank you for that, Ms. Harris. Are there any questions or comments about the executive report? 
All right, thank you. There being none, um, can I have a mover and a seconder for receiving the report, please? Can Councillor Lee. Uh, Councillor Nailis is moving it. Councillor Lee is seconding it. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, community and corporate group report. We've got Mr. Naidu, and he's here um, with us today. Thank you. If yes. you could take us through that. Thank you, Your Worship. Sure. And uh, good morning, um, elected members and staff. Um, I'm taking the report as said, but I would like, as usual, like to highlight a couple of points in the report. I'm going to start off with the appointment of uh, Colleen uh, Litchfield, uh, has been appointed to strategy advisor uh, and corporate writer, replacing Kimberly Atkins. Um, Colleen has worked for a number of councils within the Waikato uh, region, including uh, Tawaka, and will be focusing on the annual plan. And uh, I see Colleen that's up there. Uh, Colleen, uh, do you want to add anything, or are you happy for me to tell you? She's unmuted. Oh, there she is. No, can't I'd just like to say hi. Um, really nice sitting in on this and looking forward to seeing where all this going. It's great to be here. Thanks. Colleen, welcome to the South Waikato District Council. When we're doing face to face, we will get you in and give you an official welcome and, and let you have a little say if you like. Um, but good to have you on board. Thank you. Cheers. Yes, thank you, Colleen. Um, so, annual plan uh, following the approval at the last council meeting, staff are working on minor changes to, uh, and then we're starting to plan for the consultation on the fees and charges. Just a reminder that uh, we'll be highlighting um, progress of the year one of the LTP and what is proposed for year two uh, through an informing document. Climate change adapt uh, adaptation, given the ongoing uh, focus and challenges climate change, staff are developing an action plan that identifies the current and forecasted challenges for the district. Staff are working internally and external, and with external stakeholders and partnering up with regional council. The sports play activity occasional uh, plan, Sports Waikato continues to work with staff supporting the um, and integrate, supporting the integration of the uh, play, sport play uh, um, plan within council's projects. Given the workload, uh, sport, uh, Sports Waikato are looking at reoccupying the offices in, in, in the uh, North Bay Mall, which is good on top of council. Uh, the Tokyo CBD 2022 and beyond, um, my report provides an update on the progress of the bid. Engagement, um, engagement uh, the strategy and engagement team continue to support the organization through engagement, informing, consulting on a number of projects across the district. Corporate policies, a number of policies have been uh, reviewed and up for adoption, and a couple of came to, have come to council this morning, and there's a few that are put the executive team and staff for uh, being reviewed. Our legal and procurement uh, administrator continues to work on a number of leases, and I've listed them in my report. Infrastructure strategy, um, an update on the uh, flat extent surveys uh, out of the 1,146 affected properties, um, property owners in, in Tokoroa and in Jira, 400 uh, took up the opportunity to have their properties surveyed. And to date, we had uh, 267 properties in my, my report talks about 230, but we got the latest figure. It's 267 properties have been, have been completed. Uh, the evaluation, uh, the evaluation of three assets are underway. And given the importance of this evaluation, staff have engaged a consultant to review all replacement costs to ensure that we are in alignment to the rest of the Waikato. A clear timetable has, uh, has, been, has been developed to ensure our timeframes are met. Um, staff continue to work on, on uh, the imp uh, improvement program around three water data, data collection. And finally, I um, just want to do a bit of an introduction to our interim uh, GM committee and corporate. So, an appointment has been made for an interim GM uh, community corporate. Deborah LaSalle's uh, Debbie will fill the role for the next six months to a fixed term contract. She yeah, she was here. Oh, yeah, she did to go. Oh, oh okay. The arrangement is to provide an interim, uh, interim management of the group until a new chief executive has been appointed. Debbie was previously the group manager of strategy and community services of White Council until October. Uh, Debbie's professional experience also includes the management of community services, libraries, aquatic facilities, 
community development at Hamilton City Council and was a project manager at the Hamilton Zoo. Gave his input in the radio public, given the experience in, in the community space and local government. I'm happy to take any questions. Unfortunately, Debbie was um, joined us this morning, but had to leave. It was really good if we could do an introduction, but uh, I'm sure she'll, she'll meet the election members at the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Naidu. Um, I've got a couple of questions that if I can just start off with, please. I want an update on the Business Improvement District and that group and where they're at, because it seems to be taking quite a long time and I have, we haven't really had any, any wins, I guess, on the board. What, what have we got? Yeah, so where I, are we at? Okay, please. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll get uh, Ms. Diamond to, to update you on that because she's been working closely with Kelly. Uh, okay. Thank so you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Simon. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so they have drafted up a constitution for the business. There's a couple of problems. They've drafted up the constitution for um, the association or for the entity, and um, that is with the the lawyer or solicitor legal um, a to be able to look through that to make sure that that is okay. Um, part of it is outlined in the report was there was this um, request from the light industrial area to become part of it. And so for um, Ms. Remitis to be able to engage with them, she's actually needed some of the details from us, um, which uh, predominantly around the property owners. And so we've been working through getting that data for her, which hasn't been as easy as anticipated. Um, so that has now been done so that she can start to engage with them. She's done the walking and face-to-face -face with the business owners in that area, but um, being able to connect with the property owners is a bit more challenging when she didn't have the information to be able to do that. So she's got some of them. There is still some information or contact details that we need to obtain to get that to her. Some of it is we are going, we will do the engagement because of the confidentiality around the um, contact details. So we will do that and get the property owners to make contact with her and go around that space. So um, that's what's happening on the bid side of things. As far as working together, the interim committee is working really well together. It's about getting a really good collaborative culture that um, starts to um, work together instead of sort of going off in different spaces. And there are different portfolios that people are starting to take up and in developing what could be some of the activities that are being put forward that the um, that the group could actually do or that the incorporated society could actually do. Um, so it's more around planning and designing that plan and engaging at the moment. So what you see though is um, in the table, and this was spoken about when Mrs. Remitis came into council when we were doing the community contract, um, when each group came in to discuss, part of it was they wanted to know what would be the outcome so of the rates, how much would rates change if there was different amounts. And so we um, were able to model that for them. Um, and as you can see, it's, it depends on if it's a split between the ward rate and the bid area. Um, and right to if the bid area were the only ones that were paying for it, because they're looking at a 250,000 um, amount. And if it was just them, that so that they could know how much they would be paying if they were willing to pretty much front the cost of that um, compared to the 50-50 split, compared to what's currently being paid by the ward and if they wanted, if the bid area wanted to um, fund the rest of it. So that's where that is at, at the moment. Thank you for that, Ms. Diamond. How long have they been in operation? How long has Ms. Remitas been working, contracted to council? Sorry, Can how... How much how longer? Long? No, how long? So how long has she been working with, with us? Yeah. Yeah, so she's been with us for, I think, six months now. Um, yes. Yeah, so it was towards the um, third, fourth quarter. Oh, hang on, sorry. 
Yeah, around September last year, I'm just trying to go between calendar and financial years, um, around September last year, that we started to permanently work with her in this um, and moving forward in it. So it hasn't been an easy space, as I think uh, all the councillors um, recognise it wouldn't be an easy space um, to work in, but the um, enthusiasm that has come forward is really beneficial. Being able to have a group to for other areas within council to go and speak to. So our um, planners are also making contact with that group um, as well. And the database that's been able to be put together of the contacts of the businesses is really good too. So um, there's definitely some wins coming out of it that have been beneficial to come back to go across other functions within the council, um, as in with our planning and our growth planning moving forward and to make it making it easier to engage with the business sector in that space. So, um, oh, so Ms. Diamond, would you be able to find me when we actually first signed the contract with Ms. Um, Remitus and how long she actually has been here? Um, and I, I do, thank you if you would. Um, the other thing, I look at the 250,000 that they uh, are requesting. I mean, that, that would have to be a, a pretty significant justification to have that, and that's a decision that we would make as elected members. And by Jingo's, we'd have to have a very strong business plan to support anything like that. That is just my comment there. Um, so that, that was my question there, Mr. Naidu. Thank you for that. Um, you talk here about the data warehouse, Taituara um, data warehouse. Um, what, what is it? Staff will be developing a project that will work with councils, community, determine indicators used to measure outcomes, relationship, what is, what is that, please? Can you explain it? So do you want to do that, Kitty, or you want me to do yep. No, that's fine. Um, so the outcome indicators is um, council through their um, long-term plan um, decided on outcomes and, and a description. Uh, a description of that outcomes but we actually haven't gone through to the path of actually figuring out how to measure where we're actually how we're actually progressing in regards to those outcomes so that's a part that we need to be looking at either this year or next year is looking at those indicators and I'm talking about like with some of the stuff you do with um, economics so with Paul, you're looking at um, employment and, or unemployment rate or beneficiary rates. Um, we may look at um, vibrant culture. What does that actually mean that we're looking at? So within Tai Tuara, they've actually grouped them into the different well-being so that whenever we're when council starts to decide which indicators that they choose to measure on, they know that they're hitting areas within the different um, well-being sectors, as well as the focus on the outcomes that you've decided on. So it could be how we've got a vibrant culture. Well, what? how are we going to actually measure that against a cultural well-being? And so that may be the significant areas which um, or, or significant sites, which is something within planning and, and how they're working with um, Raukawa around their tuturu. Um, whenua, um, it may be around the historical sites in, in, the, in the district, um, it may be with the artwork that's presented, what, how people feel healthy, do people feel safe and expose it, uh, saying what their identity is or saying how they feel. So those are all data sets that we can draw on um, to measure are we actually working towards and making decisions towards um, fulfilling the outcomes that were decided. Thank you for that. Um, Ms. Harris. I won't say much more than that, that other than that councils, if you've been around for a while, you'll know that several years ago, um, local government was required to come up with community outcomes and come up with measures and KPIs for those. It went a bit quiet for a number of years and it's come back with, with this government in terms of community outcomes and that's been run across all of the public sector. Right. So the problem that the government has had is using real, really good measures that are both um, scientifically based and also perception based. Yeah. So the issue that councils will have is if we all have different indicators or a different mix, um, it's going to be really interesting going forward. And it'll be interesting whether the government gets around to actually 
coming up with their own community outcomes because I find it interesting that local government's required to do it, but the government still is not settled on it. Mm. So it's a big space, mm. um, and that's how delivery of social outcomes will be measured going forward as well. But at the moment, we don't have mm -hmm. those at the high level. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to hand to you, Your Worship, was just the intention was always to have a set of uh, data that we could share with our community. So everyone's working from the same information right. and having, you know, sourcing out from different places. We always had, you know, we've got engaged and say, what do you want to see? And we'll capture that information for, for our community groups. So okay. everyone's working from the same, same uh, set of data. Good. No, good explanation. Thank you for that. Um, my last one is the asset class revaluation. And you're, yes. we're talking about the three waters and the um, and valuations and information. Are our staff being contacted, excuse me, by um, central government's Three Waters Steering Group for information? Has that occurred? And is, is that happening? The time it's taking and whether we are paying for, or whether the steering group is paying for our staff's time to give them that information or not? My well, question. Mr. And it's coming in from the asset revalue. Well, this is your report, sorry. That's why I'm going yeah, yeah. yeah, Absolutely, your worship. But I think the question is more directly right. down to Mr. Okay. Anderson. Yeah. Mr. Anderson, can I just yeah. Mr. Anderson, please, have you got any comment? Yes, your worship. Um, a lot of the information that we provided was provided in February last year, December to February last year, which was that initial data that was provided to um, DIA. Um, since then, um, there have been requests for small amounts of information which have been um, shared. Um, there have also been requests of staff that could be released to do some work in the new entity. So those things have been coming in. Generally, we've because we uh, because a lot of our staff wear many hats and they're not. Um, purely in the water area, we've not been able to offer too much um, resource into that. But the question, most of the questions that we've needed to answer, or sorry, I'll rephrase that: all of the questions that we've had to answer in the last six months have been simple um, answers, um, which is information that's um, like the number of staff that are employed. Um, wow. So because if they become too complex, we need to actually start looking at a framework by which we will be responding to, to them. All sure. right. Thank you for that, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Naidu. Those are my questions. Are there any other questions of Mr. Naidu's report? Councillor uh, Dane. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to... Um, I guess I've got a few questions regarding uh, the Tukuro CBD 2022 because I have concerns similar to um, some of the questions that you've been asking. When when Karen Remitis was last in the chamber and presented at a council meeting, she informed us that a bid would take place in January. And it's now February the 24th. And looking in here, the bid request on page 24, the bid, bid rate request would be proposed for 2324. Um, We've got a lot riding on um, this to be successful. Um, tied up in this is uh, is the town centre panel um, opportunity as well. Um, yeah, I'd like to know how much we've spent on this exercise to date, because the winds have been very small from my own observation. A um, couple of planters in the CBD area and some painted windows. And um, some of the feedback on the painted windows was interesting because uh, painting Christmas decorations after Christmas on some of the business shops. And yeah, it's concern. And um, even how they want to change the bid proposal, um, what we had su suggested shows an average bid amount to the rate pay of $70. Um, every other option that they want to go out with is substantially more. Um, from 580, average amount per rate payer to 1,150, that's substantially different. So, 
yeah, I'd like to know how much you've spent to to date, and I'd like to also know when when is the bid going to happen, and also to have a clear path on the strategies or direction that they're going forward because it's time is ticking and I'm not seeing much on this end, and it is of concern. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, to you, Your Worship, I'm happy to uh, respond to that. And I think what, what we need to do is just come to council, uh, the next council meeting with a full report on what's happened yes, today, please. what what, ex, uh, what expenditures happened uh, since then. Uh, but the challenge we have is that, you know, it's it's an individual that you're trying to get it on the table. And that's where the whole up is actually getting agreement. But I think, Council Dean, we, we'll, we'll get the, uh, our staff to get a report, a full report to council uh, the, um, when's the next meeting. I think the next meeting, just outlining what was done today, what was ex uh, what, what expenditures uh, undertaken, and what's with the Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Day. Are there any other questions, comments of Mr. Naidu's report? <laughs> Thank you. There being none, can I have somebody to uh, move the recommendation that we receive the report? Uh, Councillor Day is moving. And Councillor Shorter is seconding. Thank you. All those in favour? Again, oh, Eric. Thank you. Mr. Nigel. Just before you move on, I'm, given this is my last council meeting, I'm, Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, oh, my apologies. No, 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 good. Um, firstly, I just want to acknowledge uh, Kitty and, and their team in terms of the work we've done today. But I'm hoping that I get an opportunity to address elected members at the end of uh, the public exclusive meeting. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Right. You've thrown me now. Oh, sorry. You're not allowed to go. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Hamilton City's going. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right here. Let's move on. Page 28, item 5.3, the regulator regulatory group before Mrs. Robinson. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll take the report as read. I've just got a few highlights and updates to share as we run through it. Um, national policy statement on urban development and district plan changes. Uh, the virtual online opportunities are on track. Um, and thank you for your engagement in that. They're due to roll out late March. Um, so we'll give you a bit more information as they come to fruition. Uh, Wotu Kwari Puriti Pa, um, the Environment Court has just contacted us this week regarding the abatement peel um, mediation and they're asking for dates post uh, mid-March and they're also asking if all parties are willing to continue virtually. Um, and in addition to the technical external uh, resources I've identified there, we also now have a landscape architect peer reviewing the resource consent. Mrs. Robinson, if I can just jump in there yes. on that um, report, please. After the last, after the presentation from Rokahawai O'Connor, um, I acknowledged her presentation. You have been back to her as well, haven't you? And you've had ongoing discussions with um, with um, Nati Huri. Uh, where are they at at the moment? And after the presentation and response from council, I heard we've heard nothing. Um, yeah. Uh, so that uh, resolution was in um, public excluded. So I haven't discussed that resolution directly with Ngāti Huri or Rokawa. Um, we meet with interested parties, including Ngāti Huri, Rokawa, Heritage New Zealand and Regional Council every fortnight. And we talk about the status mm -hmm. of the resource consent and the abatement notice and the monitoring um, and all other work streams related to the Woju Quarry site. Um, the conversation that was held this week um, was uh, very good. Um, we've got our lawyer talking with um, Ngāti Huri and Rokawa's lawyer just today, actually, to ensure that there is alignment, if at all possible, um, for the outcomes that we're wanting to achieve through the mediation. Um, so we hope to have a little bit more information about that next week. Thank you. I will ask that question again um, about your ongoing um, relationship with them since the last meeting in non-public. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I'll continue. Thank you. Uh, so um, 
an update on um, the gambling policy. We have had minimal community engagement to date, even though there has been um, the story in the media uh, that was, I think, a couple of weeks ago, um, outlining some of the information in the social impact report. We've received four submissions to date, so that's still open at this time. Um, some information there from the animal control and compliance team. Um, good to see that they um, didn't have too busy a time over the summer break because they did actually need some time to refresh as well. And there's some interesting analysis there of um, the penalty outcomes. Uh, the next update I wanted to provide was um, South Wakata Environmental Initiatives. Really good to see uh, the significant investment in the district's for, uh, biodiversity through this group. So we provide a very strong administrative um, support to the team, um, but the team are external. Uh, so that's that's going really well. Public places, bylaw notification. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to jump in there. We do have Councillor Nailis on that as a council rep, don't we? Is I understand right? so, yes. Thank you. Just checking. Councillor Nailis, do you um, get to those meetings? I went to the last meeting. Thank you. Yes. Oh, cool. And, and are you happy with the way everything's going as well? Yes. So we've got a new... Um, Council staff member on it, um, and I forgot his name. I'm just going through. Thomas George. Thomas George, that's the one. And um, he provided us with an excellent report, and um, it's looking good. And I must say, the farmers in the district are doing a good job. Thank you for that. Thanks, Mrs. Robinson. Thank you, Councillor Nailis. Uh, so the public places bylaw changes that were uh, specific to alcohol restriction on um, sports related reserves is on track. Um, so that's due to occur uh, next month. Um, the Healthy Rivers Waiora proposed Waikato Regional Plan change. Um, we will need a delegation resolution in time for this. Um, and at this stage, Ted, uh, Mr. Anderson and myself have discussed that it's probably best while we are talking about point source discharges that he will receive the delegation to make um, decisions for council in that regard. We're not asking for that today. Um, the update, uh, though, that's just come through this week is that the judge has now directed the regional council to respond by 1st of March on the matters that have been identified in my report, and that a pre-hearing conference um, is likely to occur, which is probably going to start with the judicial um, members that are included, um, involved uh, of the week 7 March. So things are starting to move. It has been very, very slow going. Um, just an update on the, um, the results of that. Arla hearing, which was for the Trees Tavern, we have received two expressions of interest, but no formal application for a new license as yet. Um, it was interesting to note under the building control uh, statistics that we're still having more than half applications requiring uh, further information. When I asked the building control manager what was changing, what is the difference in trend, is it because we're receiving more? Um, the response was they're just still poor applications. So um, that's really disappointing. Uh, we are working with our um, our agents that we work with regularly to outline where the pinch points are so there is learning opportunities and um, just to highlight again um, the risk for the very successful commercial developments that are now coming to our district as we're getting more at that high end uh, council doesn't currently have in-house what we call our C3 commercial 3 expertise it's, it's not something that we need um, um, on a regular basis, but because we have to outsource those types of applications to the experts that operate across New Zealand, there's a lot of work going on and we have had several rejected because of workload issues at, at their end. So um, Mr Duthie has been working very hard to negotiate actually getting a building consents process to ensure that um, 
we can meet the requirements of the developers. Um, and those are all the highlights that I wanted to mention. If there's any questions, happy to take any queries. Thank you, Mrs. Robinson. Great motions. Councillor Nailis. Um, I'm interested in the vote to quarry uh, dispute. Um, our previous CEO and probably still a little bit current, um, Mr. Smith, started the negotiations um, between the different parties. Ms. Terrace, our um, interim CEO, will she be involved in the, in these sort of negotiations or, or meetings as well? Or will, because of us having an interim CEO, will some of these negotiations not happen? Uh, because I don't want to see this whole uh, process being stalled. What is the view on that? So we've got two processes that are formally in place at the moment. We've got a resource consent for an expanded quarry operation, which we are processing. Um, the, the chief executive is not generally um, involved in that process, but she's kept up to date. We've got um, uh, an abatement notice on the table, which is restricting um, blasting in the existing quarry until it can be proven that it is safe, that it won't impact um, the par any further. Those discussions are due to be heard um, through mediation um, at the Environment Court. Um, and in the meantime, uh, we intend to continue to speak with JSWAP, the operators, on all of those outstanding matters. And at at this time, we're still summarising what those look like. And after we discuss with um, the iwi um, legal representative and follow up on the director, I've just followed up again just this week. Uh, we've been asking for the data of the trial blasting that occurred on the 23rd of December, and they have not shared that with us, even though their appeal refers to uh, we don't have any evidence uh, regarding the blasting. We now have a blasting expert on board from Australia, but they are not sharing information with us for our blasting expert to peer review. So we're due to have a conversation with the directors about that, and yes, um, Ms. Harris will be involved. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, the, and they will be on a without prejudice basis because we are involved in a legal um, process as well. All right. Good. Good. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on Ms. Robinson's report? No, there being none, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Another comprehensive report. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the receipt of that, please? Thank you, Councillor Petley. Seconded, Councillor Lee. All those in favour? Against, uh, carried. Thank sure. you. Can I just, yes, can I, can I just interrupt, Councillors, just to thank let you know? So we've just been informed that. Um, our events person sure. has a positive for COVID and uh, unfortunately that person was probably um, contagious when they had the whole classroom through for which yeah. school was it? Uh, the intermediate? Um, technology intermediate. Yeah. yeah. So um, the schools, Fiction. we're just about to talk to the school about that but I'm just giving you a heads up and there's also possibly a link to our library as well. So there's going to be a lot more cases and obviously we're going to have issues about operating even with having two teams. Um, so this is going to take off quite quickly. So don't be surprised if you see that uh, the media release going out in the next 30 minutes to let everyone know what's going on. So I'm just giving you a heads up that COVID's in the community and it's in our buildings. The event centre will be closed and then cleaned and then open on Saturday for another event and you will have the use of it on Tuesday. Yes. Yeah, so Good. that's where we're at. Good. Thank you for Thank that. You. Thank you. Just to let you know. All right. Any co co uh, comments or questions? No. It was inevitable, unfortunately. Unfortunately, we just have to keep ourselves and our families uh, safe and who we deal with. Boosters and distance and masks. It's just the basics. We have to keep ourselves um, mm -hmm. and our it is safe. All right. So it is what it is. Thank you.
Yeah. Moving on then, we'll finish this and then we'll stop for lunch for half an hour. Uh, we've got our performance report from um, Ms. Burra. Thank you. <coughs> Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, my, I put my video on, but I, I'll just move. Sorry, it looks like I'm looking into the distance, but I'm not really. I'm looking at the screen. Um, um, I just wanted to give you a couple of overall points. So this is a performance report to December. Um, um, as part of the overall report, we've got a number of vacancies throughout Council, which has um, led to our operational expenditure down, being down a bit. Um, we've been having some issues with supply of goods and labour um, across several areas of Council, which has impacted on some of our capital projects. And um, we've, uh, and specifically, it's uh, affected some of our roading projects, which has meant that our operational and capital costs have been down on both of those. Um, and Chris and the team are working with Waka Kotahi as to what that's going to mean um, towards the end of the year, um, for the uh, end of the year. Um, just yeah. a reminder that we've got um, a, a detailed um, CapEx reporting is now um, going for our major projects to the, um, to the Community and Assets um, Council meeting. Um, other things of note, so um, our um, loans we've got reported here, so we, um, we refinanced, um, we had some commercial paper maturing um, on the 1st of February and we've refinanced that with, um, with um, a floating rate note um, out to 2028. Um, and because it's floating, our, our average interest rate has not changed um, a lot from that so far. Um, and I'm just happy to take any questions that um, people might have on the rest of the report. Thank you, Mrs. Ms. Farrar. Are there any questions or comments? I have one, and, I, and it may be a dumb one, but I'm just putting it out there. For, for this year particularly, and I guess it was last year too, we have um, not been able to keep up with, with our projects, as you've said, um, and we've got opera, we've got um, operating costs are lower than expected. So we're actually going to have quite a significant surplus, I would imagine, at the end of this financial year. Would that be correct? We will be at, we will be carrying project um, funding over, but we will still have quite a significant surplus at the end of the year, which would take us outside our policy. Is that correct, Ms. Brown? Do you think? We haven't. Um, I, I think it's too early to say that just yet. These are the um, reports to December. Um, um, I would hope when um, in the next meeting in six weeks' time, I will give more of a, a view on that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit of a difficult time. And, and obviously, um, yes, over the next four to six weeks, um, we're going to have some more disruption to... Um, you know, to services and being able to ob obtain things. So um, that may have an impact as well. But um, yes, uh, it would well, look like that at this stage, but well, I'll pro try and provide more information at our next meeting. All right, thank you. Just before, I, I'll just continue and then I'll, I'll go. And my reason, my, oh yes, definitely I do. My reasoning is that most, most years when we have the overs and unders, Really, the, if we've got, um, uh, if we come in with a profit, then it goes into the consolidated fund, basically, or what, or into whatever, wherever it goes. And so we've actually made a profit that year. Over the COVID, and with the impact on rates for next year already, we know we're looking at seven point six or seven point eight or something like that. I think, aren't we? Um, Rob, sorry, seven point six. 7.6, that's right, thank you. Rather than that just going into the consolidated fund, is it an option to put it towards rates next year? Now, I think we might have done it once before, but usually it just goes, you know, we re-rate every year. Um, and to, to, so if we have got a considerable amount left over, and that's why I, my thinking, that we actually put it towards rates for next year? 
that's I'm just throwing that out there, Miss Terrace. I might ask you if you want um, to make a comment. So, uh, through you, uh, your worship, I'm not so familiar with um, the financing system here, at South Waikato, but. Um, in terms of profit, that can be a little bit of a misnomer, de depending on whether it's um, based on projects that have been specifically funded. And obviously, if you don't get through your, your Capital Works program, um, those and you put rates income into some of those, then that actually has to still be used for that going forward. And that's the concept of getting... So that's carried forward. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't, you can't go and ask for that money again. No. So that's not part of your profit. So that doesn't go near okay, your net no. profit. Right. Um, in terms of operating profit, yeah. you'd get that if you could save on costs and perhaps you had low staffing. Yeah, which you have. have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, generally, you probably won't have too much. You might have some non-cash profit, so I'm not sure about that, um, Fiona. So I'm not sure, but what um, some councils do, and, and you're suggesting it is, if you do end up with a bit of a... Um, an actual a real surplus, yes. yeah, and that's usually not too much. Mm -hmm. You can think about, and, and I haven't really talked this through with Fiona, but you can think about having what I'm referring to as a general rate reserve, which is kind of a little bit like a, a disaster fund, where you accumulate that to a reserve in, in with the idea that if you have some unexpected out expenditure in the next year, you can offset it. Right. And it's never generally a huge amount, but it's usually for one off unexpected things. So you wouldn't want to do that year in, year out. Right. And you don't offset that use it that to offset rates. No. Okay. But remember you've rated already in your community. Yes. yes. So you should set aside the things that will be rate funded if you weren't going to fund that, you know, directly. So it's usually something unexpected that pops up, not, not about a natural disaster, but um, that's what I'm familiar with for some councils, and it, that can be, you know, a million dollars or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just be aware that you can have a cash profit and you can have a, a paper profit, and they can be quite different. Right, yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, thank you for that information and that explanation. All right, I'm just going to leave that one there anyway. It was just the question I, I was asking, and I'll, yeah. I'll think on that one. Any other questions or comments to from Ms. Farah? Right, thank you. There being none then, I'm going to take the report as read. Um, and can I have someone to move and second uh, receipt of the report, please? Thank you, Councillor Nailis. Seconded, <laughs> Councillor Shorter. All those in favour? Oh, Against, oh. carry. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farah. Um, the next one, I think that's it. Um, we've got the presentation at two o'clock for the, from the BNZ Bank. Um, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Oh, members information. And then I'll adjourn the meeting. And we come back in half an hour and we will do public excluded. So I've got members information. My one is just to remind everybody about the Future for Local Government Zoom meeting on Monday. Um, I will be setting up this room again like we are today, but we have got the um, steering group that central government has set up uh, will be talking to us. Now, they did email us some, some attachments for your reading pleasure before we get to the Zoom meeting. It's two hours from two to four, and they're going around every council in New Zealand just looking at ideas and just wanting to... Um, to get our, our feelings and thoughts on future for local government. All right, for the, for the reforms. And then we've got, and the next reminder is Tuesday morning, nine o'clock at the event centre. It will be open by then. It's been closed for a deep clean. Um, and we're starting the interview process for the new chief executive. So that's Monday all day and Tuesday morning. That's me. Any other members' information? We said for this after adjourn. So. Right. Can I? So we're going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Can I have a mover and a second to just adjourn? Oh no, I'm actually. Um, did you can come back to your presentation? Yes, I am. Thank you. You're right. You're right. I need a mover and a second to, to adjourn the meeting because we will be coming back. Thank you, Councillor Matron. Seconded, please, Councillor Petley. All those in favour? Right.
Barry, thank you. Okay, so I'm adjourning the meeting half an hour. We're going to come back at 20 past one, please. All right, so you can go and have some lunch. Thank you.